Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome to Lost Planning the Interwebs. I am your host, Nick Riccada of Riccada Law, a small law firm in central Minnesota. And today we've got some things to do. We've got some things to do. I know you guys know we have things to do, but we have things to do. I apologize for being slightly tardy. I was, uh, we'll get to why. We'll get to why I was slightly tardy in just a minute. It's not. It's not big deal or anything, but it is a new promise that I made that I was I was a little bit late in uh, late in Soye when he's thinking about Vic on those lonely weekends uh, when I was when I was fulfilling my my promise on Vic themed shows to check the GoFundMe for the last 24 hours and find the funniest donation names. So I've compiled the newest ones, my favorites, out of the past 24 hours. And they're fresh. They're as of like two minutes ago. So that's why I was a little late. We'll get there in just a second. Uh, we got a couple, couple points of business. Points of business. Let me lay out today's show for you. Today's show, we're going to start with a skim through. It won't take very long. But this is important. Oh, goodness. There's some, uh, there's some motion. Well, there's some paperwork that was filed today uh, that's pretty interesting. Um, coming from Beard, Harris, Bullock, and Hughes. Want to go through that and, uh, and talk about it real quick as people filter in for the, for the show. So we're going to get into that pretty quickly. And then we are going to get right into Vic's deposition. Um, Vic's depo is pretty long. And uh, we will not be doing all of it tonight. I think I have an hour and uh, 22 minutes to do tonight, which should take, I mean, that's going to take some time. What is, what is kids? Uh, it's going to take a little time, a little time to talk things over. What? Never mind. Stop with the references. Stop it. Stop it. Uh, it's going to take some time to go through. So we're going to do that. Um, what we'll be looking for are differences, key differences between the tactics of uh, Beard and Lemoyne. We'll be looking for differences in mannerisms and answers between uh, Ron and Vic. We'll be looking for things that we think went well, looking for things that maybe didn't go so well. Um, there's a... Uh, there's some... You know, there's some stuff in this deposition. The other side thought fit to release selectively 57% of this deposition. I don't think that they thought that these depositions would actually be broadcast. I don't think they thought that was coming. But of course, if I can get my hands on it, I'm going to broadcast it. Of course I'm going to. Hilarious. I think they're amazing. They're ma who gets to watch this? And more importantly, who gets to watch the deposition in its full context? I mean, you've got me. You've got me. My bias is open. Uh, my bias is out there for everybody to see. But, but the raw deposition footage is there. It's not edited other than to redact names and a list of names that was agreed upon um other than that there's not going to be edits about some addresses or whatever if they're in there uh of course you know that type of sensitive inf information is redacted out but there's not like 47 percent of it missing right like that's not that's not going to happen i mean we'll only have the first part tonight but the rest is coming uh the toye deposition um, I think that was all of it. There might be a little bit at the end. Uh, I have to check and, and see on that. And, uh, but you know, this isn't being presented with little snippets and sound bites tailored to make someone look good. You get to make up your own mind and how the witness looked. I know how a lot of people saw Ron soy boy. <laughs> it wasn't good. Wasn't good fam. It was not a good look for you. And, um, and the people who, what's more interesting 
to me than the people who are ripping him to shreds as he deserved to be ripped to shreds were the people who said nothing about it because that tells me a lot more a lot more so um yeah so we're gonna do we got a couple orders of business first things first let's talk gofundme gofundme is currently at two hundred eleven thousand twenty seven dollars Thank you all for your continued support of the GoFundMe. Um, this is, this is, and th they're so good. They are so good at telling, telling Ty exactly what ruins their life. They're so good at it. And it's this GoFundMe. Man, they can't get it out of their heads. They cannot stop talking about it. They cannot stop being envious of it. They can't. They can't figure it out. They want it to be illegal. They want it to be unethical. They want it taken down. They want the money out of it though. They want the money. They want all of this and they just can't have it. And they think everything is going their way and they just, it's this one thing, if we could just get rid of it. It's not the one thing, guys. It's not at all just the GoFundMe. The GoFundMe is huge, but it's representative. It's representative. Not only is 6,400 people decide, like, first of all, there are, there are 6,400 is going to be a tiny microcosm. A it's a tiny microcosm. Right? Uh, how, how often have you heard that, Ron? That's just a tiny microcosm. It's a tiny microcosm of the support that Vic has. That's the great thing about it. You know, what they say about this stuff is like, you, you generally can only persuade 10% or so of the people to participate. Getting a 10% participation rate is very good, very big thing. If that number is accurate, and that would, mind you, getting a 10% participation rate being good, that would mean that there's 64,000 people supporting Vic. Right? 6,400 monetary supporters at 10% of your, your overall base is 64,000. That's if your engagement is at 10%. If your engagement's at 5%, you double the number. It's 120,000 people supporting Vic. That's massive. How embarrassing for them that they can't get anybody on their side to even give a dollar. Can't get anybody. When Jamie Markey uh, or Jesse Pridemore or any of these weirdos do their little GoFundMe projects, you recognize the names. It's other voice actors showing their support. No fans. No fans. I mean, there's a couple, there's a couple like white knights from Twitter that whose names you recognize. That's why I'm calling them white knights who specifically stood up for them. And and there's a couple of them, but nowhere near these numbers. So this, what they don't understand is that the $211,000 war chest, that's their term, war chest. I'm, I'm taking it, taking it. War chest is the best boob job. The $211,000 war chest, it's not about the money. It's showing how badly you're losing the public. That should concern you far more than the number of dollars in there. It's the number of people willing to put dollars in. Screw you, idiots. You are terrible, and the anime community is onto it. They wanted no part of this. They wanted no part of this. You drove them there. You brought them to the place where they're willing to give money in the hopes that you lose. Can you imagine, can you imagine the people who watch you and purchase your products turning on you to the point where they would pay money for you to be destitute? Oh God, that's a bad feeling, I bet. That should bother them way more than the money. All right, uh, so with that, let's, uh, what do we got? Here are my favorite names of the day. Oh, I didn't, I didn't increase this one. This one's my favorite one here we go <laughs> so first we've got uh casey's ass property of beard airs bullock and hughes uh pedophile ron toye 
Pedophile Ron Toye found that one very funny. Ron Cuck, to Cuck Norris Toye laughed at that one. This one made me laugh a little bit too hard. Ronald the Cuckold Spaniel Soye. Uh, Monica's whale size dairy. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> and then, uh, Ron, this looks like my donation. That's a, that's a good meta joke. That's in there. From yesterday, thank you. Thank you. Uh, uh, Miss, Miss Toye, did you donate $5 to Vic Mignogna? Uh, looks... Looks like my donation. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's not the question I asked. Did you donate $5 to Mr. Vic Mignogna? Uh. Uh, and then finally, a hug tighter than Casey's noose. By the way, did you guys, did you guys realize how absolutely busted Casey was after he decided to have his little, his little chimp out with the behave? With the behave. He didn't just tell her to behave, right? You could almost hear him like, you, you need to behave. You need to behave. He's, he was indignant. He was mad. He got mad. And then he got bodied. He got bodied and it was written all over the last part of that deposition. If you guys haven't, if you didn't watch all of it or whatever, I urge you to go back to yesterday and you, you watch the K, you listen for the Casey, because you got to listen for the Casey going up to that moment. And then you even try and find Casey after that moment. Oh man, he's like a, he's like a dad dodging child support. Yeah, Ron, love you, buddy. Yeah, yeah. No, you're doing fine. Yeah, Ron. Objection form. Objection form. Objection form. Uh, so that was, that was great. That was great. Okay, next. Um, oh, here we go. We can get rid of that. Uh, Earthworm Jim. I'm bringing this up because there are four hours left. Earthworm Jim will end during this show. If you have not gotten Earthworm Jim, go get it. You have four hours. It's, I mean, he's been on Razor Fist all night. I got to update it. Uh, we're, we're at, uh, where are we? Whoa, he's over $662,000. Doug to Naple has created the best-selling single print crowdfunded comic ever made. Uh, I think Ethan still got him due to the variant covers and stuff that, and the multiple releases of, uh, of Cyberfrog Blood Honey. But, um, Doug is the biggest single campaign so far. It's your last opportunity. He's added in so many bonuses. Um, he just keep, he's just been keeping on adding those bonuses. So this is it. I want people to know three hours left. So during this show, this campaign will end, go check it out. Uh, see if we can see if you want to help him get to 666,000. So he knows that the devil helped him or whatever. Uh, it, I, I think he'd even appreciate the comedy of that, but that's that. All right, let me get, let me get real quick. The, uh, documents pulled up here for um, filings, and then we'll do those. And then we're gonna go into these things. We're not gonna, I don't know how much time we're gonna hang out in these documents, because I really wanna watch this deposition. But I think the deposition's going to be very, very different. Um, very, very different from, uh, whatchamacallit, Toye's. I don't know that it'll be as funny. But we'll see. All right, almost got him here one second. Okay, so the procedural aspects of what's going on here. Uh, where'd my window go? Nope. Oh, I'm in it. Wow. <laughs> Someone give me batteries for my glasses. <laughs> I'm still I'm still laughing about that. I'm still laughing about that. Uh okay. Let's get this discovery pulled up. Not discovery. What am I talking about? Document. Document. Uh so we have Where are they? Two documents here. Uh the hearing coming up 
Hearing coming up, I believe, on the... Man. I think it's on the 8th of August. Something. Well, I, it should be in here. Uh, I don't know where the... I don't remember when... The, the hearing coming up. That's how we do it. I don't recall. I don't recall. I don't recall. Plaintiff's response to defendant's special exceptions. This is the hearing. The hearing they've said is on these special exceptions. Uh, special exceptions are where the uh, defendants would raise specific issues with the plaintiff's petition. So they've raised some issues, and this uh, they've set a motion hearing on it. Um, not quite sure why they set a motion hearing on it, but they did. Uh, a lot of times people work out these special exceptions with an amended uh, petition. Hey, look at that. There's an amended petition. Um, but uh, they're going to look. I, I skimmed through the document earlier. They've they've clarified some of the positions and then others are dealt with in the uh, amended petition. So um, it's kind of interesting. But let's go through this real quick, because this is where the defendant says this is weak. This is weak. This is weak. And the plaintiff says, OK, we'll fix it. And, and that's that. All right. So honorable judge of said court, uh, Victor Mignogna responds to defendant Monica Real and Ronald Toye's special exceptions to plaintiff's original petition as follows. I actually found this first part to be really, really interesting procedurally. Um, defendant special exception to plaintiff's defamation claim. Paragraph, paragraph 12 of their May 13th answer, Monica and Ronald. Gosh, it's got to be hard not to type like Ronica and Monald or whatever. Raise the following exception. Defendants specially accept to section 4A, 6A of plaintiff's original petition titled defamation on the basis that it fails to state any cause of action for any allegedly defamatory statement that is time barred because of plaintiff's failure to comply with the notice requirements set forth under the Texas Defamation Mitigation Act. All right, so here's their argument about it. Texas Defamation Mitigation Act requires the plaintiff to make a quote, a timely and sufficient request for a correction, clarification, or retraction from the defendant during the period of limitation for commencement of an action for defamation. Before filing his lawsuit, Vic sent his required request to both Monica and Ronald on April 12th, 2019, complaining about tweets they published between January to April 2019. Exhibit A. April 30, 2019, letter from Casey Eric to Ty Beard, attached hereto and incorporated by reference, acknowledging receipt of the TDMA letters and attaching copies. So they attached Casey's response rather than their own letter, and they did that because Casey is acknowledging response of the letter sent on April 12th. Vic's requests coincide with the tweets and publication timeline, i.e. January to April 2019, identified in his petition, plaintiff's original petition, here are the paragraphs. Since the statute of limitation for defamation is one year from the date of publication, uh, a TDMA request for retraction sent within 90 days at the latest, a publication would be within the period of limitation for commencement of an action for defamation. Moreover, Vic specifically alleged that all conditions precedent to his claims the request for retraction under the TDMA had been performed or occurred as in plaintiff's original petition at 36. Hence Monica and Ronald's special exception in paragraph 12 of their defendant's original answer lacks any basis in law or fact. We're going to get to this footnote in a second and I'll tell you kind of what I think. Nonetheless, to be abundantly clear, Vic has amended his petition to specifically allege the required TDMA request was sent to both Monica and Ronald on April 12, 2019, complaining about tweets they published between January and April 2019, plaintiff's amended petition. Accordingly, Monica's and Ronald's special exception in paragraph 12 of their defendant's original answer is moot. Okay. This is one of the areas that I believe Law Twitter was attacking. And to be fair, to be fair and 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 uh, and honest and, and all of that, I think that maybe... This was a, a little bit of a valid criticism. The TDMA letter, there's, there's a question of how specific it has to be. Um, the TDMA letter that was sent did not specifically address each of the 342 tweets individually. Now, I think that requirement is overly onerous and silly, but that may be the... Uh, plain meaning of the text. How courts have applied it, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. They've got their argument in the footnote that we're going to check out. But if we're being critical of the complaint or of the TDMA letters, 
It's that it's perhaps that they didn't, they weren't specific enough in addressing each of the tweets. Now, again, does a judge want, I mean, that would be a 500 page document because you'd have all of the tweets attached to, you know, a letter that was 100, 200 pages. It'd be crazy. It'd be crazy. So the question is, does the court actually want that? Don't know. Don't know the answer. I'm trying to be trying to be fair in the analysis here. And uh, and it's it's an open sort of question. So here's what they say. Even if Monica and Ronald this well, this is the interesting counter argument. OK, even if Monica and Ronald believe they must specially accept as a condition condition to claiming Vic's claims are barred by limitations. See Tullis versus Georgia Pacific Corporation. Uh, defendant seeking dismissal based on statute of limitations must file a, first file a special exception, giving the plaintiff an opportunity to respond. Uh, CPRC 73.055 is not a basis for dismissal. That's Hardy versus Communication Workers of American Local. Uh, local 6215 AFL-CIO. Um, rather, if Monica and Ronald thought that Vic's request did not incorporate all tweets for which he is suing them, they should have filed a motion to declare the April 12th, 2019 request insufficient or untimely by the 60th day after service of the claim. That's from Texas Civil Practice and Remedies Code 73.058C. Since they were served on April 19th, 2019, Monica and Ronald had to file such a motion by June 18th, 2019. They did not. Let's take a quick look at this rule because I'm not familiar Again, I'm not an expert in Texas civil procedure and would never claim to be. Uh, whoops. Maybe I should look where I'm typing. So I'm not... Uh, civil Practice and Remedies Code 73.058. So I'm not typing yexes. Okay, so we want uh, C. Here, I'll, I'll pull this over here for you guys. Oh my goodness. Boomer, boomer hour. Let's get this pulled up. Okay. If a defendant intends to challenge the sufficiency or timeliness of a request for correction, clarification, or retraction, the defendant must state the challenge in a motion to declare the request insufficient or untimely served not later than the 60th day after the date of service of the citation. Oops. I mean, the, the, uh, <laughs> the rule can't get clearer than that. The rule can't get clearer than that. So interestingly enough, while they had an opportunity to declare this motion or the, the TDMA insufficient and then challenge its validity, they may have just waived that. And if they waived it, the TDMA is presumptively sufficient. If it's presumptively sufficient, that sucks. That sucks. Those 342 tweets, you could, uh, you could have argued that it wasn't sufficient as to those 342 tweets. What you're going to have real trouble arguing is that they didn't have notice of which 342 tweets they're talking about. They're right there. And they were authenticated on the record. So they may have lost. I mean, the judge, I guess, could decide to rule against the plain language of the of the rule of civil procedure, but that would be a weird flex for a judge to make. That'd be very appealable, very appealable. So uh, they probably blew their ability to snuff out due to an insufficient TDMA letter. Now, I don't want to laugh yet because the judge hasn't ruled on it. However, I want to point out that all of Law Twitter's involvement, all of Law Twitter's involvement came about because they were mocking the sufficiency of the TDMA letter. And while Ronald and Monica and Marky and Pride Moore and everybody else were busy dunking on that country bumpkin lawyer tie, maybe they were toasting champagne with their lawyers, they didn't bother to file their, their problem with the TDMA letter. So it may not matter if you think the TDMA was insufficient because you can't challenge it now. So that sucks. <laughs> well,
We'll see. I don't know. I don't. I haven't looked at the case law on that. Uh, my, I, I was busy, busy and then napping all day today, uh, cause I got done with the show last night at like five in the morning. I had to leave for a mediation at seven thirty this morning, so I had a very short night and a very long day. But, but we got good results in the mediation, and then uh, I was able to get a nap in, and here we are. Here we are. But uh, I will make it my mission to check on the case law surrounding that rule because I think it's very, very interesting. That, I mean, if you screwed up, the one thing that everyone was telling you was wrong and you didn't bother to correct it under the rule, you might be, I mean, they might have, again, again, just making the case so much harder. The slam dunk case, so much harder. All right, defendant special exception, general special exception to plaintiff's other, other claims. General special exception is weird. Paragraph 13, Monica and Ronald raise the following special exception. They special accept to section 6B to E of plaintiff's original petition on the grounds that the allegations are so general, vague, and unclear they fail to apprise defendants of what plaintiffs expect to prove. Special exception must point out intelligibly and with particularity the defect, omission, obscurity, duplicity, generality, or other insufficiency in the allegations. Texas Rules of Civil Procedure 91. General allegations that a petition is vague or indefinite is not sufficient to identify the defect, but rather prohibited general demure that should be overruled. That's Chambers versus American Hallmark Insurance Company of Texas. Here, Monica and Ronald merely allege the section 6B through E of Vic's petition are general, vague, and unclear. Uh, this is simply a general demure that should be overruled. Nevertheless, in his petition, Vic pointed out several of the contracts and relationships he enjoyed with conventions and how they were affected by Monica's and Ronald's actions. Absolutely true. Later incorporating prior paragraphs by reference, he alleged that Monica and Ronald willfully and intentionally interfered with these contracts, unlawfully prevented others from fruition, and conspired to accomplish these ends unlawfully. They gave anyone reading Vic's petition a good idea of what he intends to prove. Furthermore, petition is sufficient if it claims fair and adequate notice of the facts upon which the pleader bases his claims. The key wit inquiry is whether the opposing party can ascertain the nature and basic issues of the controversy and what testimony will be relevant. Despite claiming that Vic's allegations are so general and vague and unclear, they failed to apprise them of what Vic expects to prove. Monica and Ronald were able to plead 25 affirmative defenses in response. Their numerous affirmative defenses belie an argument that Vic's allegations are general, vague, and unclear. Uh, and the court should overrule this special exception in paragraph 13. I don't know if that's the best argument. Like, uh, they were able to articulate 25 affirmative defenses. Um, but, but, it, I mean, I guess it is an argument. But in if I were on the other side, I would argue, well, we had to raise 25 affirmative defenses because it's so general and vague. I mean, so it's kind of a back and forth. I think the pleading was sufficient. I think the pleading was sufficient, but that would be my argument. Um, let's see. Uh, oh, yeah. Um, hold on one second. I've got a minor tech issue. Okay, sorry. Fixed. Uh, all right. So again, we're kind of skimming through these because I don't want to spend all day on this document. And you guys want to see a deposition. You are here for a deposition. Defendant special exception to plaintiff's claim for damages. Uh, this is an interesting one too. So the defendant specially accept... Uh, the entirety of plaintiff's original petition regarding the relief sought and asked the court to require plaintiff to specify the maximum amount that plaintiff claims. This is not a required element of the pleading. However, when they request it by special exception, you then have to amend the pleading. That's the remedy. The court says you have to amend the pleading uh, to go ahead and, and state a maximum. So the Texas rules state that upon special exception, the court shall require the pleader to amend so as to specify the maximum amount claimed. This is a cumbersome, weird conflict of rules where you don't have to name it unless they ask, then you do have to name it. So uh, rather than waste the court's time on an easily resolved issue, Vic has amended his petition to state the maximum amount claimed. So they've changed that. Claim for TI with existing contracts. Uh, they accept to that saying it's insufficient. 
Let's just move past that. Elements for a claim of TI with an existing contract are the existence of a contract subject to interference. Willful and intentional interference. Willful and intentional interference caused damage and actual damage or loss occurred. This is from Exxon Mobil Corps versus uh, Rincones. This is as recent as 2017 from the Texas Supreme Court. Accordingly, Vic incorporated his factual allegations by reference and then pled each of these elements. Vic enjoyed contracts with multiple conventions prior to the defendant's tortious conduct. However, the defendants willfully and intentionally interfered with these contracts, proximately causing cancellation, termination, even breach of these contracts by the convention producers, thereby causing actual and consequential damages in excess uh, of the minimus, minimal jurisdiction amounts of this court. Notably, the elements of the claim do not specifically include a defendant's knowledge of the contracts, though presumably the defendant's knowledge and intent are implied by, if not definitively included in, an allegation that the defendant acted willfully and intentionally. Nevertheless, to be abundantly clear, Vic has amended his petition to specifically plead that defendants knew of the contracts with which they interfered. Plaintiff's amended petition at 42. Thus, the exception raised in paragraph 15 uh, is moot. So then they've got uh, Black's Law definition. Dictionary definition of intentional uh, ties the sovereign citizen defendant special exception to claim for TI with prospective contracts. So they say that that's insufficient. Well, let's just look at the argument elements for a claim of TI with prospective contract are there was a reasonable probability that the plaintiff would have entered into a business relationship with a third party. Defendant either acted with a conscious desire to prevent the relationship from occurring or knew the interference was certain or substantially certain to occur as a result of the conduct. The defendant's conduct was in independently tortious or unlawful. The in interference proximately caused, by, caused the plaintiff's injury and the plaintiff suffered actual damage or a loss as a result. This is one of my criticism, criticisms of law Twitter lately. Uh, many of them seem to think that this requirement for tortious interference with prospective business relations exists, with tortious inter or exists inside tortious interference with an existing contract. It doesn't. It doesn't. The interference with an existing contract is the tort. It is the tort. You don't need an underlying tortious act. You don't have to have, you don't have to commit defamation to tortiously interfere with an existing contract. For example, you could offer something of value to induce breach. That is tortious interference with an existing contract. There isn't a specific, necessarily a specific underlying tort about that. Uh, or underlying that tortious interference. The question is, are you justified in your interference? It's justification that is the measure for, for the defense for tortious interference with an existing contract. Prospective business relations requires an independently tortious or unlawful act. Blackmail, uh, extortion, um, a kidnapping, uh, or, you know, some defamation, for example, is a tortious act. Assault, battery, I will beat you I will, I will cut your finger off if you don't break this or if you don't do this thing, um, whatever. If, if anybody employs Vic in the future, I'm going to cut the fingers off of children. That's, that would be uh, tortious interference with prospective business relations, for example. Um, especially if you actually do cut the fingers off of children. So uh, that's, it's, it's just a difference between the two torts. And they keep, I've seen a couple of them mixing it up. Not all of them. But I've seen them mixing it up to saying that the existing contracts requires an underlying tortious act. It doesn't. It is the tort itself. This one requires the independent act. So uh, Vic's claim incorporated the factual allegations. So there's reasonable probability that Vic would have entered into agreements with other production companies and conventions. Very reasonable. However, the defendant's unlawful actions prevented these relationships from occurring. Defendant's unlawful actions were taken without justification or cause. Indeed, the defendants were motivated by malice. Defendant's tortious interference proximately caused Vic actual and consequential damages, including lost profits in excess of the minimal, mi minimal jurisdictional amounts of this court. Uh, conduct was willful, fraudulent, malicious, and in wanton disregard for Vic, thereby en entitling him to punitive damages and amount to be determined at trial. Uh, so anyway, same thing. Vic has amended his petition to specifically plead that they knew of the relationships. Civil conspiracy claim. Oh. Uh, civil conspiracy claim is same thing. Uh, we're going to, we're going to have the same sort of story here. So I'm not going to, I think we're, 
I'll probably go through this and the amended petition in more detail very soon, but I really want to get to this deposition. But uh, it's the same thing. Here's the cause of action or that are required to be pled. Here's what they're alleging they did plead and saying it was sufficient. Now, they went ahead and, uh, let's see, this one, to be abundantly clear, Vic has amended his petition. So again, they've, they've just simply amended the petition. Um, that's right here. We're not going to go through this right now. We're not going to go through this. But uh, it, is, it is here. Um, I'll probably go through it early next week or something like that. It's available on Research Texas. You can go find these documents. But I wanted to give you kind of an overview of what's going on. Again, as we get, I mean, we're approaching 9,000 people already. So we should, we got to get this thing started, right? We got to get it started. So here's their uh, response letter that was cited um, and includes the TDMA letter that was originally sent. Uh, I'm not going to go through all this. It's just here, just so you know. Um, but yeah, we'll probably go through this on a different, different date. And, uh, and that'll be fun. That'll be fun. But for now, let's get physical. Okay. All right. There's Vic looking very, uh, looking very, very Chadly in comparison to Ron Toye. Let me hit the super chat so we can make sure and keep up with them as the stream is going. And then we'll, um, let's, then we'll, we'll do this deposition. We'll do it. Uh, by the way, as with yesterday, I mean, we've got a ton of viewers. We're probably pushing into trending. Make sure you hit like. It helps. Hate asking. It's weird. But if you uh, if you would like the video, it'll help push it and get even more people in here. Rando number nine says, F in a moment of silence for Dark V. Yeah, actually. Unironically, the most base and red-pilled person to come out of New York in the last century. Yeah, uh, Dark V was a, was a guest and contributor of the Ralph Retort, and, and he uh, passed on uh, apparently yesterday, I believe. AK Arbiter says, like how Ron and Casey combo pissed off Ty so much that you got secondhand pissed off. Also meant to ask how you felt about the 45,000 barrels of whiskey that were lost a few days ago. I always, I, I, I'm going to pour one in for my homies. Uh, Night Commander says, did you see the silly boy Akiva Cohen dared the Kiwi Farms to destroy his life? Literally minutes later, he was docked so hard they even found out about his gay ex-wife. You know, here's one of the things that's really weird. For a guy who works at a law firm, right? This is not an... How do I phrase this? How do I phrase this? If you work at a law firm with, like, and you're like a low-level guy, and you go ahead and threaten a notorious doxing and harassment site and taunt them into doxing you, you have... Like, you're lucky that the farms didn't want to ruin you because they could have started doing something like doxing people at your office or something crazy. Like, they could have done that. And then you'd have to go in and answer to a senior partner. Why are my kids' pictures being put next to your name type thing? Right? Like, I don't think... Any of these people are thinking through what they're doing. Uh, it, it's just... Ty said he would rather pick a fight with ISIS. There's a reason. There's a reason. He's called having common sense. Uh, I cannot believe. Cannot believe that was Akiva Cohen's plan. That's, I mean, that's a way that... He's vulnerable to being fired uh, based on his his ridiculous insertion into... Uh, and, and slagging of, of a law firm and then of other people who he just had no business interacting with in the first place. Not a good plan. Not a good plan. Um, okay, what? We've done it already. I guess I have to do it, right? What? What is this? What? Over 9,000? That's impossible! This thing must be broken! I think I keep, I think I keep getting it wrong. But anyway, anyway, uh, <laughs> there we are. We're over 9,000 people. Let's, uh, you know what? I got to get Vic's face on here at least because having just a blank space is weird. 
what is this a taylor swift video uh all right uh forever 229 forever 229 says i will excuse your lateness if ron is bringing you the snack tray it's a long walk. Ethan Amante says, I know this is late and off the topic, but is but in an Alex Jones voices, uh, I don't like art style. I don't like art styles to turn the friggin' battle toads gay. What? They're taking a the battle toads. <laughs> Sorry. Ryan Mercado uh, says, they, Greg, say the amended petition is still so bad that it's going to get dismissed under the TCPA 100% guaranteed. Yeah, well, they, they kind of, you know, We'll see. We'll see, won't we? Interestingly, we can test their theory. Blight Wolf says, I thank you for what you do, and I wish you the best for bringing us such entertainment and real news. Hey, thanks. My pleasure. Savoy6 says, Ron Burgundy Soye laying in bed next to Monica, sips his coffee and smirks. Monica says, remember, Ron, don't give Ty anything. Ron replies, right. Due process. Perception Check says, have you seen the Stan Dolan tweets? I have. I eat the guy Monica name dropped in her allegation against Vic as the dude that knocked on the door and saw that she was distressed. Very interesting. It doesn't doesn't look like they talked to Stan before doing that. Cringe Lord says, question. I just watched a state trooper run a red in front of me at midnight. Can they run a red to see if you will run the red behind them? Can they pull you over with that BS? Yes, they can. Yes, they can. Uh, or ask short round. He'll tell you no, they can't. Intimidator0108 says, Hey, Nick, day one of Anime Iowa is done. And the highlight of my day was talking to a Marine who's a recruiter now and getting a pick with him. Hope you're, doing, I hope you're doing well. And I look forward to the next stream after you and Cody roasting Ron. Hey, thanks, buddy. Blaine20 says, How soon can we get an affidavit from Stan Dolan? Uh, see my Discord d DM for reference? I don't know. I'll have, to, I'll have to look. High Explosion Murder says, Vic's GoFundMe is living rent-free in the kick Vic's heads. Yep. Lunar says, I'm still only four hours, 18 minutes into your near quarter of a damn day long stream from yesterday, you absolute mad lad. Apollo 536 says, oh good, I was worried you got lost in the warp or something. You know how fickle the immaterium can be. Will K says, Ron is a toy poodle. Far from the sheepdog. Chris Kyle can take home, uh, take, take home out, Take him out in his grave on Minecraft. Corey Yates says, K Casey Carey is serious waifu material and should be protected at all costs. Maybe a shout out to my brother Joey, if at all possible. Hey, Joey, what's up? His car broke today and it's been hard on him. Thank you, Nick. The car will be healed or recycled. Chin up, bud. McGraybush says, uh, Soy Ron, the great, greatly powerless cuck of the north, wearer of the cuck ring, bear of the bull snacks, sheepdog of whom he can't recall. Ryan Boggs, Nick, I just finished my master's thesis today. I'm going to have to cut these short in just a second. Uh, my master's thesis today. Thanks for entertaining me and teaching me that law can be interesting during this incredible stre incredibly stressful period of my life. Also, to the audience, remember to like the video so we can get over 9,000 viewers tonight, which we did. I'm going to do two more, and then we're going to go. Uh, Kilo Bravo 777 says, don't forget my 20 for Ty's glasses, but here's another 20 for batteries to put in the router. Don't want a repeat of last night. That was weird. That hasn't happened to me in, in well over a year. Freighter J says, casting for the eventual film adaptation. Vic, uh, Anson Mount, Ty, Tommy Lee Jones, Nick, Chris Pratt, Ron, John Waters, Monica, Roseanne Barr, Jamie, Honey Boo Boo's mom, T. Greg, Danny DeVito, and Shane Corky from Life Goes On. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Poor Shane. Uh, all right, let's do this. Let's do this. Let me make sure we got levels. And we're going on the record and the Oh man, that's quiet. Uh you know what I should do? Hold on. I'm gonna open this again in VLC because I can boost the um I can boost the level if I need to. Open with Oh my gosh, where am I? And we're going on the record in the videotape deposition of Mr. Victor Mignogna. Today's date is June 26th, 2019. Mignogna? Let's get this. Let's get this thing. Oh my goodness. Well, that's a bad pause. Sorry, Vic. It's not personal, buddy. All right, let's, uh, here we go. The time is 10.05 a.m. At this time, will counsel please state their appearances for the record? 
and then the court reporter will swear in the witness. Ty Beard for the plaintiff. Casey Eric for defendants Monica Real, Ron Toy. Uh, Sean Lemoyne uh, for the defendants Monica Real and Ron, Ron Toy. John Boldy for Funimation. Sam Johnson for Jamie Martin. Go ahead and announce it. Uh, Carrie Christie for Vic Mignogna. And then we have. Okay, I have to make a couple notes right away, right right away. Uh, this deposition happened the day before Ron's deposition. That's something. Uh, that's something to remember. Bear in mind, this deposition happened before Ron's deposition, um, and it was conducted by Mr. Lemoyne. Lemoyne, Dijon Lemoyne. So he's the uh, he's the deposer here. Um, of course, uh, Casey was Casey was representing Ron at uh, his deposition. So we're we're not going to hear from Casey in this one. And I just want to point it out that that Lemoyne was brought in before Casey's kind of questionable performance. <laughs> uh, but but yeah. So here we go. Of appearing uh, by Zoom, which is a teleconference. All right, nope, I can't use I can't use VLC. If you notice, it's uh, the audio is not starting up for several seconds after I restart it, and that's gonna I'm gonna it's gonna piss me off. And we're going on the record in the videotape deposition of Mr. Victor Mignogna. Today's date is June 26th, 2019. The time is 10:05 a.m. At this time, will counsel please state their appearances for the record, and then the court reporter will swear in the witness. Ty Beard for the plaintiff. Casey Eric for defendants Monica Real, Ron Toy. Uh, Sean Lemoyne uh, for the defendants Monica Real and Ron, Ron Toy. John Boldy for Funimation. Sam Johnson for Jamie Martin. Go ahead and announce it. Uh, Carrie Christie for Vic Mignogna. And then we have uh, appearing uh, by Zoom, which is a teleconference. We have Ethan Minchel uh, from Wick Phillips and Andrea Perez. Uh, from uh, Kessler Collins, and also Miss um, Marchi and Mr. Toy, and I think Ms. Real are joining by uh, Zoom. Get used, get used to that that gravel sack sound, because we're in for a long time of that. And do you want to do the? Yeah, we're on the record. Yep. Okay. Uh, council has agreed that the only people that will be watching this live stream are the parties and council, and that it will not be recorded or otherwise distributed without agreement of all the parties. Is that That's agreed. You, that's correct. That's agreed. Okay. Uh, one, other, one other thing, the, the, this lady sitting in the black with the gray sweater hasn't introduced herself, has she? No, she's a, uh, Lisa Hansel, she's our witness consultant. Okay, so she's a witness, a jury consultant of some sort? Witness, but yeah. All right. My office. All right. Uh, one other agreement. Can we have an agreement that objection for one of the defendants is an objection for all, so we don't jump all over each other? All right. And I don't know if everybody wants to do consecutive deposition numbering, so that it would be throughout the deposition, since I suspect there'll be a large number of them. But, Mr. Beard, that's up to you. In other words, uh, one objection that you guys uh, that one person makes is deemed to be oh i'm, I'm sorry all, no no what I'm, that, that that's an agreement for the defendants that way we don't okay. keep objecting what i was involved the agreement in. what i was asking everybody at the table because i can't dictate this is consecutive deposition numbering i mean we start today at one and if we go to 42 and then tomorrow there's a new deposition one through 42 stays set you'll have them you can use the one through 42 and then any new depositions would start at 43. That way when you get- <laughs> Someone, can we get a mom, can we get some mom in that deposition room, please? So she could just, so she could just give them the firm right on the back a couple times, just get it out. <clears throat> just get that out of there. Oh my gosh. <laughs> uh, Scully. Says Kiwi Farms, scarier than ISIS, notoriously evil, and yet they don't stoop to the level of going after someone's livelihood. Isn't that amazing? Jonathan Dolph, 
says, hello, Nick. The joke about the name Jadoff last night hit close to home and home memories. <laughs> Thanks for all the shows. Keep up the good work. I'm having fun sharing your show to potential viewers. Eagles talent. Hey, thanks, buddy. <laughs> At a trial and you're playing deposition testimony. Oh, don't we'll have them. You can use the 1 through 42. And then any new depositions would start at 43. That way, when you go to trial and you're playing deposition testimony, the 42nd deposition exhibit is the same in every deposition. Does that make sense? No, but. <laughs> if I may jump in, he means consecutive exhibit Zip. numbering. Oh, sure. Yeah, that's fine. That's what is that saying? You're saying consecutive deposition, deposition. numbering. Yeah. Oh, okay. I was skipping the word exhibit. Yeah. I got it. Yeah. That's fine. Okay. Any anything else we need to discuss? Read and sign, I assume. Nope. Okay. You don't want to read and sign. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, help me out here. Do you want Mr. Uh, is it Mignana? Mignana. Mignana. Yes, Very good. Uh, Mr. Mignana to read his deposition and sign it when it's over. Oh yeah. Okay. Absolutely. I'm sorry. Yeah. I, 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 I was thought a thousand miles. I was a thousand yeah. miles away. Uh, so. Um, Ethan, please. Ethan Van Skyver, are you with me, buddy? Are you in the chat? Please tell me you're watching tonight. Yes, you are. Ethan, if you need a voice actor for Cyberfrog, I, I, I will personally have Ty send me Jay Sean Lemoyne's business card. <laughs> if, you need, if you need it. I'm just saying, if you do the animated Cyberfrog... Jay Sean Lemoyne is your guy. He's got it. He doesn't even have to try on that one. Uh, Intimidator0108 says, Hey, Nick, maybe a full jar of Vicks VapoRub and a full bottle of NyQuil will help clear up his voice. <laughs> what I thought. Uh, Mr. Mignogna to read his deposition and sign it when it's over. Oh, yeah. Okay. Absolutely. I'm sorry. Yeah, I, 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 I thought that's... Mi I was a thousand yeah. miles away. Uh, that's what I thought. Please. All right. We otherwise ready? I need you to raise your right hand, sir. You do solemnly swear the testimony you're about to give will be the truth, though, truth, and nothing but the truth, so be done. Yes, I do. This will be taken under the Texas Rules of Civil Procedure. Uh, would you state your name for the record? Victor Joseph Mignano. Mr. Mignano, would you identify the woman with the black shawl and the gray uh, shirt? Who is she? Uh, her name is Lisa Hansel. And what does she do for a living? Uh, for a living? Yeah, do you know? Uh, she does several things, but among other things, she does makeup. Uh, work and uh, production work. And when you say makeup work and production work, is that in some kind of for film and television? Okay. Uh, is she, to your knowledge, has she ever been a witness consultant? I don't know anything about. As you sit her today, is she? Do you have you hired her to be your witness consultant? I have not hired her. Okay, but I'm going to uh, ask that Ms. Hansel be excluded from uh, the deposition. Counsel, I hired her, but that's fine. She can be excluded. Okay. Have you ever been deposed before, Mr. Mignogna? No, sir. Have you ever had to give testimony in any capacity before? Yes, sir. In what capacity? Uh, I was a police officer for a time, and uh, in my job capacity, I... Come on, Vic. Come on, Vic. Making it, making it too easy. Compare, like, immediately. Again, this... Thinking about, not this deposition, but thinking about putting these guys in front of a jury. Vic is composed, seems more calm. I don't know if he stays that way, but he seems very calm. Ron was fidgety. Ron looked like a squirrel. Ron, very nervous, kind of... Vic was a police officer. First thing he leads with. Great. Great choice. Great choice. Uh, and and Jay Sean led him right to that. So I was a police officer. Instantly. Instantly, Vic will be more credible than Ron will. In the eyes of an average jury, much less in the eyes of a Republican jury in Texas, probably in a very heavy law and order district. Like, uh, the, the cards just, they don't always fall like this. This, th these are good cards to fall. I would have to testify Hold again. On, yes, sir. In what capacity? Uh, I was a police officer for a time, and uh, in my job capacity, I... 
I would have to testify against defendants that I arrested and give testimony. And when were you a police officer? A long time ago, <laughs> roughly uh, 86, 87. I don't recall. In Maryland. That's what he should have said, right? And uh, how long were you a police? And how long were you a police officer? A year? Uh, roughly two years, on and off. And when you when you say on and off, were you some kind of auxiliary police officer? Well, no. I w well, I was a I was a seasonal officer. Uh, went through a deg the the necessary degree of training and sworn in, powers of arrest, etc. Were you allowed to carry a pistol? Yes, sir. Well, and I'm sorry. Go ahead. And then at some point, uh, they realized that I had a background in film and television, and they asked me to uh, to start making PSAs and commercials for uh, pedestrian-related, citizen-related videos to help educate the the, uh, the public. Hey guys, I'm Vic here, your neighborhood officer. I want you not to jaywalk. Look into these eyes. You want to jaywalk anymore? Go to the crosswalk. Take your time. Signal. Look both ways. Thanks. I can just imagine. <laughs> That's why I'm for uh, pedestrian related, citizen related videos to help educate the, the, uh, the public. That's why I met on and off. I, I started doing the video stuff toward the end. When did you stop uh, being a police officer? Uh, it was just a couple of years, so I guess, you know, roughly, again, I'm, I don't remember the years specifically, but a couple of years. And why did you cease being a police officer? It was never a, a career move. It, it, was, uh, it was something that I thought would be interesting to do right out of college. I mean, it wasn't something I intended to do for a long period of time. Were you terminated or did you voluntarily quit? No, I voluntarily quit. Did you Apart rape anyone? Attorneys, have you talked to anybody in preparation for this deposition? No. Uh, what have you done to prepare for this deposition? I just spoken with my attorneys and prepared. Uh, do you review any documents to refresh your recollection about any uh, events that you might be discussing today? No, sir. Are there any medications that you're on that would prevent you from testifying truthfully? No, sir. Is there anything that you can think of that would prevent you from testifying truthfully today? No, sir. What's your full name? Victor Joseph Mignana. How old are you? 56. You ever go by any nicknames? Uh, Vic. I mean. Is that it? Yes. Uh, what about the Fuhrer? You ever, be, ever go by the nickname the Fuhrer? <laughs> no. Uh, have any, Excuse me, are you counsel, aware of could you say that louder? Uh, the Fuhrer. No, Ty, he can't. Don't be mean. He can't say that louder. <laughs> Oh, that was, that was brutal. Ty, why would you do that? <laughs> the Fuhrer. Now, again, so interesting, similar start off, right? Uh, compare and contrast. Compare and contrast. Toye. You pedophile. Vic. You ever been called the Fuhrer? <laughs> no. Or did you go by the nickname? Did you go by the nickname the Fuhrer? <laughs> no, no. Uh, much different level of calm happening. The Fuhrer? Yeah, as a nickname the Fuhrer? <laughs> no. Uh, have any, Excuse me, are you counsel, aware of, could you say that louder? Uh, the Fuhrer. The Fuhrer? Yeah. As in Adolf Hitler? Uh, I don't know. Is uh, that how it's spelled? Yes. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. Uh, are you aware of uh, there being any group of people out there um, in, in, in the world that refer to you as the Fuhrer? Yes. And who referred you as you to the Fuhrer? Many years ago, uh, members of my fan club, the Rizembool Rangers, thought that it would just be fun, since it was kind of a nickname of the fan club, that they were kind of Rizembool Rain that they were Rangers. And somebody made it up as a joke. I had nothing to do with it. Uh, it was short-lived. Uh, I didn't make it up. I didn't condone it. It was just uh, something some fan made up. Uh, 
Do you know if your mother ever referred to you as the Fuhrer? Not to my knowledge. And when you say short-lived, short-lived, like how long? A few days, a few weeks? I don't even know. I haven't heard that reference in a very long time until you just said it. We got him. We I take got it him, boys. The, the Risenbull Ranger started referring to you as the Fuhrer. You, you understood the inappropriateness of something like that, correct? I didn't really have any feeling about it. Well, can you associate for me any other human being uh, that's been called? How many Jews did you gas? How many Jews did you gas? That's what we need to know, Mr. Mignogna. You were called the Fuhrer. How, did you invest in trains? Did you gas the Jews? I mean, come on. What are you talking about, you weirdo? Oh my God. Called the Fuhrer besides. I didn't really have any feeling about it. Well, can you associate for me any other human being uh, that's been called the Fuhrer besides Adolf Hitler? You're a plane defiler from EverQuest. And so you would agree with me that it would be inappropriate for you to have a nickname or condone a nickname like the Fuhrer? I never condoned it. Okay, and you'd agree with me that it would be inappropriate for people to call you that because you don't support that kind of uh, nonsense, do you? I don't fully understand. Sure. Can you rephrase? My, my, if somebody called me the Fuhrer, I would tell them to stop immediately because it's anti-Semitic and... Liar! Liar, Jay Sean! People are calling you the Fuhrer left and right! You are the new Fuhrer! <laughs> Come on! Come on! First to a time in our... Can sure. you rephrase? My, my, if somebody called me the Fuhrer, I would tell them to stop immediately because it's anti-Semitic and refers to a time in our uh, history where terrible things were done to Jewish people. Do you, do you have that same feeling? Of course I do. Okay. I do. So you would agree with me that if there were people out there calling you the Fuhrer, one of the things you would do would be to intervene to stop that. I knew that they were fans who meant nothing by it. They're young people and... Uh, I didn't address it one way or the other, and it died off. All right, I'll object is non-responsive. My question was uh, not what you think the fans might believe, but if you agree, they would be. Uh, I believe you asked me if they would, n if I told them to stop, and I said no. And I'm, my answer to that is no, because they were fans, and I knew they didn't mean anything by it. Their intentions were nothing more than playful, and so I didn't address it, and it died off. Does the Risenbull Rangers, do they have a definitions page somewhere? I don't know. That's not something you have anything to do with? No, sir. Is there any adult that monitors this yes. Risenbull Rangers page? Sorry, sorry, not supposed to. All of them, all of them, they're not, they're not minors. They're largely not minors, Jay Sean. Sorry. Sorry? Just overlap. I apologize. Uh, yes. And who's that adult? I don't, I don't specifically know all their names, but we have moderators. Uh, we've always had moderators of legal age to make sure that any of the, like, forums and, and places where the fans would gather to chat uh, were safe places where, where uh, there wasn't any uh, inappropriate discussions or challenges or bullying. Okay. Um, so, uh, do you know who any of these moderators are? I know some. I, I'm, they've changed over the years because, again, they're volunteers. They're fans who just offer to help. And who screens them to make sure they're of legal age? I'm sorry? Who screens them to make sure they're of legal age? Uh, the other moderators who are of legal age. Well, who screens that moderator? I'm sure at some point in time, I, I probably uh, had spoken to someone who I knew was of legal age. As you sit here today, can you identify one person? I'm sorry? As you sit here today, um, can you identify one person who is of legal age that is a moderator on the Risenbull Rangers um, Alyssa Flutie. And how old is she? I don't know her birthday. How do you know she's of age? 
because she's clearly of age. Right. How many hours does Miss? She's out of college. She has a job. She's clearly of age. How much time does she devote to the? I have no idea, sir. I'm sorry. Uh, Where do you currently live? Grapevine, Texas. And how long have you lived in Grapevine? Uh, Since late December of last year. And where did you live prior to that? I went back and forth between Los Angeles and Houston. Uh, Are you married? No, sir. Have you ever been married? Yes, sir. How long were you married? Uh, Six, a little over six years. From when to when? 95 to 2000. Mid-2000. Do you have any children? No, sir. What's the highest level of formal education uh, you've ever obtained? I have a bachelor's degree in science. Where'd you get that? Arts and science from Liberty University. In Virginia? Yes, sir. When did you graduate? 86. And after you left Liberty, that's when you became a police officer in Maryland? I know it's been a long time, so I'm not, I know, trying, so I'm sorry. not trying to trap you on dates. No, I, I, I know. I'm just trying to work it out. Um, when I said on and off, if I may, I guess, sure, if go I ahead. Um, clarify, um, as I mentioned, I was a seasonal officer. Uh, there are cities in Maryland that are vacation towns, and they hire additional officers for, for, the, uh, for the seasons. And my... Senior year in college, I was hired, and then I went back to college, so I wasn't there anymore. And then after college, I went back and did it for another year and a half or so. That's what I meant by on and off. Okay. Um, (laughs) By on and off, you meant on and off. Did you teach at a school after you graduated Liberty University? Yes, sir. What school did you teach at? Trinity Christian Academy. Where's that located? Jacksonville, Florida. What did you teach? I taught English and speech. And how long did you teach there? A year. And why did you leave? Because, again, it was not a career move. It was not my intention to be a teacher. It was an opportunity that was offered to me right after college. Did you resign or were you terminated? I actually don't even recall. Were there any allegations of any appropriate behavior? Not to my knowledge. Let me get my question out. Are there any allegations of inappropriate behavior between you and any students at this uh, school in Jacksonville that led to your resignation or uh, the termination? Not to my knowledge. And you would agree with me that if you were terminated for inappropriate behavior or allegations of inappropriate behavior with children, that's something you'd remember? Certainly. Of course, it was 30 years ago. Okay, but even 30 years ago, if you were accused of uh, inappropriate behavior with children at your first job after graduating the Christian School of Liberty University, that's mm-hmm. something that stick with you, isn't it? Yes, sir. When did you first become involved in movies or theater or TV productions? Since I was very young. All right. Uh, 13, wh- 12, 13. When was your first paying job in the... Does anybody remember, because, so he, uh, Trinity Christian Academy, that's not the school that what's, uh, Michelle, what's her face said, is it? She said a different school, right? What did she say? What did she say? Uh, I think I have it somewhere. Hold on. Um... Why don't I have this handy? Hold on. Just I just annihilated my chat. She said a completely different name in a different state, right? Like uh, hold on. I've I've got this. Just a second. 
In fact, I mean, this could be an interesting issue for her. Let's see. Mm -mm. Hold on, give me just a minute here. Uh, here we go. That's it. Here we go. Lynchburg Christian Academy in Lynchburg, Virginia, which is now known as Liberty Christian Academy. That's not at all what Vic said. So, oops. That's a problem. And I mean, I don't want to be too coy about it, but that's the statement she made under oath. So her little stupid affidavit and story just got absolutely BTFO'd by reality. Vic didn't work there. All right, anyway, sorry. Sorry. Uh, maybe, unless she said something different. Hold on real quick. Uh-uh. Man, I think that's after he moved away. But, man, that's too bad, I guess. I guess. Unfortunate when you got. Can't. Mm. Movie or TV <laughs> production? I have no right. recollection. Right. Very. When did you first become involved in movies or theater or TV production? Since I was very young. Uh, 13, uh, when, 12, 13. When was your first paying job in the movie or TV I, production? I have no recollection. Right. How long would you say that you've been in the public spotlight? Being in the public spotlight's kind of subjective. You know, like what one person would consider celebrity um, or whatever. I don't, okay. I, I, I couldn't That's answer fair. that. Let me, let, me, let me do it this way. Do you consider yourself to be a celebrity? No. Okay, why not? Because I don't. You've been in uh, movies before? Yes. You've been on TV shows? Yes, sir. Uh, you have voice acted for, what, hundreds of Japanese anime films? Yes, sir. Uh, you go to conventions where thousands of people show up? Yes, sir. Uh, you've taken over the course of your, uh, let's say, the last 20 years, you've probably taken pictures with over 10,000 people. Is that fair? I don't know an exact number. Well, I mean, is it more or less than 10,000? I couldn't answer. I couldn't tell you. Well, how many people? I, I haven't kept count. Sorry. Do um, you think it's more than 100? Sure. All right. The, what's the last convention you went to? Uh, I was at an event last weekend in Dublin, Ireland. How many people did you take pictures with there? I didn't count. More than 100? I Probably not. Uh, do you consider yourself to be a celebrity in the uh, American voice actor community? I don't feel like it's for me to say whether I'm a celebrity or not. Good answer. OK. Uh, Anybody a more popular voice actor, uh, any, I guess, American anime community than you? I'm sorry, would you ask that again, please? Yeah, I mean, I, I, you're, you're, I know you're involved in cartoons or something like that, so how would you describe? Oh my God, <laughs> we all know you're involved in cartoons or something like that. <laughs> Are you the most popular one in anime right now? Ah, <laughs> ha,
I know why they brought this guy in. Because listening to him makes me want to pound my head into the desk until it goes away. Either my head or the desk. A busy robot and says, hey, Nick, fellow Minnesotan here, wanted to say you're doing great work educating everyone here and being direct and honest. I respect what you do and appreciate all that you do. Vic's lucky to have such skills on his side. Hey, thanks. Beyond Josh says, Jesus, Lim sounds like he's gargling asphalt. Sorry for repeating chat, but my God. Lunar says, why does it sound like Lim is being waterboarded in a gallon of soy with every word he manages to spit out? Scream of Cthulhu says, are we sure Lemoyne isn't the original Fuhrer? He sounds like an old, he sounds like he's old enough. <laughs> uh, oh my goodness. Uh, GR people, hail Ricada just tuning in. Why does Lemoyne sound like a dying smoker? I think it's the West Nile virus that might have actually done it. So that's, that's unfortunate to make fun of him for that. I like the Spike Man says, inside Full Metal Alchemist joke is in a 2019 trial about tortious interference. Honk, honk. Zeon is the only worth of hailing, by the way. Uh, Nix Hex says, Limoni, would you disapprove of something, something nonsense? Vic, can you repeat that in the form of words? <laughs> Charmios says, are we sure that it isn't Lemoyne here that really needs a CPAP machine or maybe a tank of oxygen to monitor for his O2 stats? Bigotry says, I like Vic, but he needs to be clear that Fuhrer is a reference to Full Metal Alchemist. No, he doesn't. He doesn't have to defend what other people call him. He, and he shouldn't. He shouldn't do that. Because if he concedes that he should, that it's appropriate for him to correct the words of others, then suddenly he has to correct the words of everybody. Uh, let's see. Fuhrer Lemoyne's disingenuous line of questioning is so frustrating. Yep, it is frustrating, but I think Vic took the right tack. He's not responsible for what other people say. Kazma says, holy crap, Moron hired Jigsaw as their attorney. Wanna play a game? Uh, Phil Rogie says, imagine the knives going into Vic's back while watching this testimony is infuriating. I like the spy Spike Man says, Kaiser, Caesar, Czar, and Emperor are all synonymous with Fuhrer, tea leader. Uh, Greaseball lawyers, please commit gravity in Roblox. Megalord ZXA says, would anything that Ty whispered to his team be used against him? I'm asking this because Ron on Twitter was talking about it. No, no. Ty's the deposer. He gets to whisper things to his team. Uh, there's nothing, there's no problem with that. Uh, Ray Fernandez says, I might be biased, but Vic looks calm and professional here, and Ron was stumbling like Mr. Magoo. All right, back to it. Um, what did make community than you? I'm sorry, would you ask that again, please? Yeah, I mean, I, I, you're, you, I know you're involved in cartoons or something like that, so how would you describe what it is you do for a living? I provide English voices for... Japanese anime that is that is dubbed into English. Okay, is there a is there a, a lingo that we can use in this deposition for that? Is it American voice, vo American voice actor? Voice actor. Okay, all right. Is there anybody uh, that you know of in the voice acting community that is more as more celebrity than you? I've never really thought about it. So as you sit here today, uh, you don't know if there's anybody that has more what we call celebrity than you. No, I do right. not. I mean, is uh, is your is your reputation as a voice actor, is that important to you? Yes. Why? My reputation in general is important to me. Well, Jack is not responsible. Uh, is uh -huh. your reputation as a voice actor important to you? I'm sorry. That was responsive. Yes. Why? Because my reputation in general is, resp is important to me. That's, you asked why, he told you why. That's responsive. Of course. Well, my reputation in general is important to me. Well, Jack is not responsible. Uh, is your reputation as a voice actor important to you? Of course. Okay, why? Because it reflects on me as a person, it reflects on me as a professional in a field. I, and, and do you feel like you have a, a positive uh, reputation as a voice actor in your field? I believe I do. And how long have you had that, what you would call positive reputation? Well, I've been a voice actor for almost 20 years, so I can only assume that since I've been hired repeatedly for, you know, over 20 years, that somebody must think I'm relatively good at what I do. Okay. And over the last 20 years, have you attended uh, uh, conventions for Japanese anime films? Yes, sir. Is that a, uh, is that a how, part of how you make a living? Sorry? Is that part of how you make a living? Certainly. 
and I assume these conventions are open to the public? Yes, sir. And lots of people come and uh, watch or meet you at these conventions? Yes, sir. What's the largest number of people that you think you've ever spoken to at one of these conventions? I have no idea. More than 20? Sure. More than 100? Probably. More than 500? That's the point at which I wouldn't, I wouldn't be able to comment specifically. Are you usually in a room of the same size that we're in right now? The sizes of the rooms vary. Are they bigger or smaller than the room we're in? They vary. Well, they vary. on average, are they bigger or smaller in this room? They vary. <laughs> okay, what's the smallest? I've been in rooms, large rooms that had a small amount of people. I've been in small rooms that have had a larger number of people. I mean, they vary. Is your personal reputation important to you? Yes, sir. Why is that? Yep. You already said that. Why? The same reason anyone's is important to them. Well, not anyone is suing my clients for defamation. You are, sir. So why is your reputation important to you? Well, because it goes to credibility. It goes to the opportunity to continue to work and be hired. Anything else? If it comes to okay. mind. If you think of something, feel free to jump back in. It's not yes. a power. It's not a power test. Um, it absolutely is a power test. It absolutely is. You're lying. But here's the problem. Why is your reputation important to you? Because I'm glad I don't sound like you, so people don't run away from me afraid of the AIDS. Like, what? Of course, your reputation. Th this is a self fulfilling question. And, and he's trying to trap Vic into saying something. I'm not sure exactly what he's going for. I don't know if he knows what he's going for, but why is your reputation important to you? Uh, because I like how, you know, I like to be viewed positively by people. Well, why? Because I don't like to be viewed negative. Well, you're the one suing my clients for defamation. Doesn't matter who's suing their client for defamation, you dummy. His reputation isn't actually, I mean, aside from the damage it suffered, his general op opinion of his reputation has nothing to do with suing your clients for defamation. Uh, with regard If it comes to okay. mind. If you time. think of something, feel free to jump back in. It's not yes. a power, it's not a power test. Um, uh, with regard to your credibility, how has uh, whatever you think Mr. Toy has said, how has that hurt your credibility? Mr. Toy has made a large number of public assertions to which there is no evidence or proof. They're very negative. They're their uh, defamatory. Okay. And sorry. No, you, you get the answer until you've done. Go ahead. I'm, I apologize. Okay. So, Mr. Toy has made allegations you would consider to be uncredible. Yes, sir. All right. And so, if those aren't credible allegations, that really hasn't hurt your credibility, has it? There is a matter of public perception that I think we can all agree is, is pretty prevalent and powerful these days. I understand what public perception is. I'm trying to figure out whether or not Do you? somehow your credibility has been hurt by what Mr. Toy has said. Yes, I believe it has. Okay, how? By altering the perception of people that make decisions about my work and career. All right, and is Mr. Toy the only person that's had this negative impact on uh, the perception of people that are in your line of work? No, I don't believe so. Other than Ms. Real and Ms. Markey, anyone else that's done anything to hurt the, the, your credibility in the voice acting industry? I'm sure. Can you identify any of them as he said here right now? No, sir, not, not by name. Many of them are screen names. <laughs> You know, on a computer, you don't know who they are, you don't know where they live, you know, you, you can't know. 
really. You would agree with me that the allegations surrounding your alleged homophobia, anti-Semitism, and sexual harassment are being discussed publicly, correct? They are being discussed publicly, yes. And that, because of that public discussion, that's hurting your credibility, isn't it? Yes, sir. And it's not just Mr. Toy and Ms. Margie and Ms. Rial that are discussing that, is that correct? Yes, sir. Are you suing anybody else as we sit here today? No, sir. Have you sent uh, retraction letters to anybody else? No, sir. Please, you Would you agree people. with me that the damage to your personal reputation is also damaging to your fan base? Possibly. Would you agree with me that if this litigation was resolved uh, in one form or fashion, that that would be a benefit to your fan base? Would you rephrase that, please? Yeah, if this litigation was resolved, that would, that would help your fan base, wouldn't it? I don't know. Well, for instance... I've never been involved in anything like this. I don't really know what the outcome would be or how it would affect anything. Okay. Uh, how about this for an example? If the litigation was resolved today, your fan base could save their money and not donate to the GoFundMe campaign that's been set up for you. And there it is. There it is. 25 minutes, 25 seconds in. We get, we get straight to the hemorrhoid that they are licking over and over and over and over. They cannot... Get away from it. It'd be better for your fans if they weren't donating to support you, wouldn't it? Wouldn't it be better? Wouldn't it be better for everybody if if your fans didn't have to show public support for you? Wouldn't that be better if you died, Mr. Vic Mignogna? Wouldn't you agree it'd be better for everybody if you were dead in the ground and they didn't have to donate to your GoFundMe anymore? Oh, God. The, listen to it. Uh, I just like to at this time I like to take a moment and point out we're we're at uh we're at uh two hundred and eleven thousand two hundred and thirty seven dollars. There's a lot of people watching. I don't know if you've contributed to the GoFundMe yet. If you haven't and it's within your means, do so. Please. Please <laughs> look, we already have Fuhrer Lemoyne's Mein Kampf. <laughs> A West Nile story. Um, we, we This burns them up. They can't... Why would that benefit the fans? The, why would it benefit fans to not contribute to Vic through the GoFundMe? How would that be healthier for their community? You know what would be a healthier resolution for Vic? Is if your stupid clients would just go ahead, would just go ahead and own up to the fact that they lied repeatedly over and over and over in public with the specific intention to destroy a man. That would be better for Vic, better for Vic's fans, and better for the anime community than any other resolution. If they just owned up to the fact that they openly lied about someone, have lied under oath, cannot figure out what they're doing here and are scrambling to attack a GoFundMe because they can't win on the facts. Over and over, the facts are blowing them out of the water. Mr. DJ Fly says, I think Jay is trying to trap Vic in saying that the Rising Bull Rangers, some sort of child trafficking ring slash hate mob with all mods are, uh, are of age argument. Also, is it me or does Jay sound like Bernie Sanders? Well, not, uh, not, not, uh, you know, not Bernie Sanders enough. Uh, Andy M says, yes, Stephen Blum was more popular than Victor back in the day. Uh, lots of voice actors. Vin Diesel, Vin Diesel, the voice of Groot, uh, is, is more popular than Vic Mignogna by, by orders of magnitude. Um, this is a silly question. Escher Schill says, hello, Nick, how are you? I'm great. For reference, didn't Vic just say he graduated from Liberty Christian Academy? No, Liberty University. Uh, did I hear that wrong? He graduated from Liberty University. Uh, not Ghibli. 
Thank you for the donation. Serenia Sakari says, I'd be a jerk and say Mickey's voice actor. I don't know his name. Polar Bear Jago uh, says, nah, brother, he sounds like he's talking while trying to keep his dentures from falling out. Stan Vic says, Lemoine should contact Pokemon so he can be the new voice for Blastoise. Dude sounds like an underwater golem. Also, can we appreciate how genuine and normal Vic is? Unlike Ron Sway, he was a complete weasel and obvious liar. Picking up on that, right? For now, Vic is very measured and calm. I, again, I don't know how, how he ends up, but for now, he's measured, calm. He's answering the questions. He's, uh, he's not jumpy or anything like that. Not Ghibli says, Vic's such a public figure that not even this lawyer knows what he does. You do something with cartoons. Captain Tycho says, splitting 50 between Nicky Rackets and Vic's GoFundMe war chest, Lemon Fresh should lay off the cigarettes and cheap whiskey. Always get the good whiskey. Timothy Reaper says, Operation Valkyrie 2, train mosquitoes. <sighs> the opinionated one. The opinionated one says, first $20 chat, VA school is Liberty U, previously Lynchburg Baptist College and Liberty Baptist College. The Maryland school is the one he taught at temporarily and the raspy man was referring to with his questions on misconduct. But he said he taught at one in Florida, not in, not in Maryland, right? Didn't he say he was in Florida? Uh, Andre C. says, I can't wait to see how many times Fuhrer tries to claim his responsive answers are unresponsive. I'm graduating next year, and I can't wait to be an honest lawyer like yourself Ta and Ty, Nick. Keep doing what you do, and don't ever change, boss. I won't. I won't. Thanks, buddy. Congratulations. Prematurely, but go for it. And then finally, uh, Fatal System Error. And then, uh, well, three more, and then we'll get back into it. Fatal System Error says, pure gold. Thank you. Ian L says, popping my super chat cherry. Thank you. Been a watcher since you started the Mignogna case studies. I'm a videographer in Houston, and Vic is honestly more composed than most doctors that I've seen. He's doing very well. Night Commander says, I've been thinking about being baptized for a while now. My father never bothered. Vic's conduct during this whole thing has finally pushed me to reach out to my local church. Any advice? I'll, I'll need to be alone. Uh, email me. Email me. Okay, let's get back. Let's get back. You agree with that? Apple. If the litigation was resolved today, your fan base could save their money and not donate to the GoFundMe campaign that's been set up for you. You agree with that? I have nothing to do with that. Objection non-responsive. Would you agree with me that if this litigation got resolved, then your fan base wouldn't have to donate to your GoFundMe campaign? They don't have to donate. No one is compelling them to donate. No, right. no one's asking them to donate. I'm sorry? And no one's asking them to donate. Not that I know of. I have nothing to do with that. I'm asking. Please donate. Do you know how the money is spent? No, sir. So who makes sure... Let me be clear. Again, I just want to be clear. We've got 11,000 people watching. Let me rehash this, the summarized, the expurgated version. Jay Sean Lemoyne, prior to all this starting, contacted me directly. I don't have the phone call anymore. He used a burner phone because he didn't want any liability. I've got to come clean on this. And he said, my clients, Monica Rial and Ron Toye, they're going to... They're going to defame a man, Vic Mignogna, and I want you to start a GoFundMe for him. And then I want you to lie to him and tell him that the money's going to, to a lawyer that he'll hire. You gotta find him Ty Beard. That's the guy. And then you gotta funnel the money to me directly in $10 money grams sent through Western Union, okay? I'm going to hire a cuck named Casey Eric to help. He's in on it. That's what he told me. So that's what I'm done. I'm just following orders. I'm just following the orders of the Fuhrer Lemoyne. So now 11,000 people have seen that the, the GoFundMe money. See, he's very disingenuous asking these questions because the GoFundMe money is clearly going to the Fuhrer J. Sean Lemoyne. He's getting the money. He's getting all of it. I couldn't tell Vic that that's what was going on. How could I tell Vic that I was sending money to, to the opponent's lawyer? Oh my God. I feel like such a, oh man. The money is actually you know of. I have nothing to do with that. Do you know how the money is spent? No, sir. So who makes sure the money is actually spent for your benefit? I didn't set it up. I don't know anything Objection about it. Objection non-responsive. I don't know. 
So you have a GoFundMe campaign out there in your name. Do you know how much money's in it? No, sir. You have no clue? No, sir. So somebody's raising money with your name and face on a GoFundMe page. Would you agree with that? That's what I've been told, yes. And you have no idea? Do you know who runs that account? Do I know who funds the account? Runs the account. Oh. Um, I believe it was set up by uh, a gentleman named Nick Riqueda. How do you spell Riqueda? I don't know. Rude. R E K E E I T A I E I E T A. Thank you. Right. Thank you. Do you know Mr. Riqueda? I never met him until for the first time uh, a couple of weeks ago. Where'd you meet him at? I met him at uh, an anime convention in Houston. Is he your attorney? No, sir. Has he ever represented you? No, sir. Have you ever communicated with Mr. Riqueda by email, text, any type of app application on your phone? Briefly. About what? Your mom. He wrote me back in probably February. I didn't know who he was. It was unsolicited. Um, and I did not reply. Rude. And Very then rude. it was brought to my attention that there was a gentleman on the internet who was uh, making videos and, and being very supportive of, uh, of my situation. And when they told me his name, I went back into my email and looked up to see if that was the person that had contacted me, and it was. Thanks to. And so by the way, I. Brief shout out. Brief shout out. Thanks to Cody from Anime Outsiders. I know some of you find Cody to be a little bit uh, spastic and aren't the biggest fans of him. I like Cody. Let me just tell you guys without Cody, I would not have known how to contact Vic at all. Cody was the one who uh, was able to get me to contact Vic. So, there you go. Cody had a big part in making this happen. All right, let's get uh, back to it. Sent him an email, and that was the person that had contacted me, and it was. And so I sent him an email and thanked him for his support. Is that the only exchange that y'all had? Or have y'all had continuous email text okay, message? Yeah, did you talk about this litigation? Briefly. Do you know what his cell number is? No, sir. Is it stored in your phone somewhere? Yes, sir. When's the last time you got a text message from Mr. Ricada? I don't recall. Have you done anything to delete any communications off your uh, either email or phone or other uh, electronic devices from Mr. Ricada? Well, I... I have a, a routine of once I finish a conversation with somebody, I delete it because I don't want to have 600 text messages. So if you and I have a conversation about a particular thing, where are we going to lunch today, whatever, once that conversation is over, I delete it. Right, have you ever done a factory reset on your phone? No, sir. Do you ever take your phone and put a lightning cord in it? Well, strike that. What kind of phone do you use? iPhone. All right, do you ever plug your iPhone into your laptop? I have, yes. When's the last time you did that? Uh, I don't recall. It's been a while, actually. Have you done anything to remove uh, communications off, off your laptop? No. All right, do you have an iCloud account? No. Uh, wait. Just I, 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 I may, yes, actually. And do you know whether or not your phone backs up to your iCloud account? I don't know. Do you have some type of administrator that would help you with that, that handles no. that? Are you celebrity enough to have someone sync your phone to your computer through iCloud? <laughs> Lemoyne should do vape commercials. <laughs> Today brought to you by, I, by iCloud. The highest class CBD oil with the highest concentrations of THC allowed by law. Hi, Cloud Vape. <laughs> Enjoy the relaxation. <laughs> Sorry. I can't take it. I can't take it. Uh, here we go. Um, 
DZV Titan says, the monk sounds like his vocal cords have been ravaged by vigorously fluffing Tyrone before Tyrone rails someone else's girlfriend's spouse while they both watch and serve the cheese platter. Ooh. Ooh, Kilo Bravo. Kilo Bravo 777 says, big thing here. Vic rarely, if not once, looked over to Ty for anything except when he t uh, for anything except when he talks. All focus on Jay Sean. Yep. Maintain that eye contact. Not intimidated. Not intimidated. Martin J says, I think he is trying to get Vic to say he wants a positive rep so he can be admired by lots of people, making him view himself as a public figure. I don't know. First super chat. Hey, thanks, buddy. Keep doing what you're doing, Nick. Hey, that's a good idea. You never know. They're grasping. Shred face says, hey, am I the only one that feels like the defense attorney sounds like he's on his way to be the next General Grievous? Sips Woodford Reserve. Cheers, Nick. Oh, that's a good Woodford. Had a boy. Had a boy. Um. And then finally, my uh, from Stealthy Master says, my God, would someone tell this guy to stop with the dad sounds between his questions? Sounds like he's sucking the hell out of a Werther's candy. God. <laughs> okay, here we go. Here we go. So, I don't know. Do you have some type of administrator that would help you with that, that handles no. that? So, Mr. Ricada communicates with you in February of 2019. For the first time, at some point, you reach back out to him, y'all have a conversation. Uh, who came up with the idea of the GoFundMe campaign? Mr. Ricada. And what was the purpose of the GoFundMe campaign? You'll have to ask Mr. Ricada. What did Mr. Ricada tell you the purpose of the GoFundMe campaign was? Good luck. He said that he believed that the people who supported my position wanted to help in any way they could, and he said he was going to provide them a way to do so if they chose to. And you told him that was okay with you? No, I did not give him permission. He had already done it. Okay. Did you? Did he ask for permission after you did it? No, sir. Right. You do realize that people have put hundreds, over a hundred thousand dollars into that GoFundMe account. You know that? If. If that's the number you're telling me, then I believe you. Voluntarily. Right, I, on I, the I three. believe. I don't think anyone's yeah. being compelled to do anything. Did you ask Mr. Rocade to set up this GoFundMe campaign? No, sir. It was a complete shock to you when it occurred? Define complete shock. <laughs> well, that sounds rather, you know. Well, complete. how about this? How many GoFundMe campaigns have been set up for your benefit without your knowledge in your lifetime? None that I'm aware of. So this is the first? As far as I know. And Mr. Ricada wasn't a friend of yours when it was set up, was he? No, sir. All right, so would you agree with me that that was kind of shocking? That Brief trivia. Uh, before, I think either before or almost simultaneously to me setting one up, someone else had set one up as well. Uh, there was another GoFundMe that was set up. That person immediately communicated with me uh, and asked me how they could help, you know, divert the funds from theirs into mine or whatever. Uh, there it, it, and and I want to be very clear that other person did not have any um, deception or anything like that going on, uh, as far as I could tell. They they communicated with me right away, but it was technically the second. I don't know if Vic was ever aware of the uh, or. There were technically two. I don't know if mine was first or second. I don't know if Vic was ever aware of the other one because it didn't gain traction. Mine gained traction very quickly, uh, so that's that's uh, how that went. But but Vic is not aware that there was another one set up, uh, and and it may have been um, that one may have actually been reported for fraud and shut down because people thought they were trying to like copy mine or something. That's not the case, and I'm pretty sure I actually mentioned this back when it all started. So, uh, But I just want to be clear, that's why I was saying there were two GoFundMe set up, although I don't know if Vic ever knew about that other one. A random individual that you're aware of. So this is the first. As far as I know. And Mr. Ricada wasn't a friend of yours when it was set up, was he? No, sir. All right, so would you agree with me that that was kind of shocking that a random individual that you don't know sets up a GoFundMe? It was unexpected. Okay. Did you ever bless him doing that? No. Are you okay with it? The GoFundMe campaign. As a matter of fact, sir, uh, I remember when he first told me that he had done it. I told him I, I didn't 
I didn't really know how I felt about it because I didn't want people, you know, I didn't want people uh, giving money to something. And that was the point at which he said what I just mentioned to you earlier, that he felt that there were a lot of people out there who felt that I was being treated unjustly and wanted to help. So this GoFundMe campaign, uh, you don't have any idea how the money's being spent? No, sir. Don't know who, where the money's going? No, sir. What happens to the money when this, if there's any money left over after this litigation's over? I, I believe I was told at some point that if there was money, any money that was not spent left over, as you say, would go to a charity, a charitable cause. And who picked the charitable cause? I don't remember. Does it strike you as odd that there's somebody out there raising money in your name and you can't tell me how that money's being spent? No, sir. Do you feel no responsibility to make sure no, that sir. the Sorry. objection? I apologize. Thank you. So you feel no responsibility to the objection form. tens or thousands of people that are putting money into this GoFundMe campaign to make sure you know how the money's being spent? Objection form. You, you struggling with that question? No, sir. I'm. You're going to answer I'm it? responding yeah, to my question, attorney's sorry. objection. Oh, unless he tells you not to answer, you have to okay, answer. Okay, sorry, I didn't know how yeah. it worked. No, that's right. So, Please repeat the question. Sure. You feel no responsibility whatsoever to make sure that the money being put into a GoFundMe campaign for your benefit, how it's spent? Same objection, objection form. That's a question. My understanding is that it's being spent for legal defense. And okay. I trust what I've been told. And no, the, the short answer is no. He didn't set up the GoFundMe. He's not in communication with GoFundMe. He has no, no control over what happens with the GoFundMe. He doesn't. Why should he? So why would it be his responsibility to make sure the the funds are spent in the specific way? It's actually funny story. If you go read Go Lemoyne, go read GoFundMe's terms of service, and you'll see whose responsibility it is. It's not mine. It's not Fix. It's not Ties. It's actually GoFundMe's responsibility to make sure their campaign is accurate because they have a guarantee on spending that the funds will be spent guaranteed. So you got to check with GoFundMe because they're the ones who have the responsibility. That's why they have a very careful selection process. It's also kind of why I picked the site, you dumb pile of garbage. All right, where did you get the understanding that's being spent for your legal defense? What's the name of the GoFundMe? Do you know what it is? Sure. I'm going to show you what we're going to pre-marked as Exhibit 11. I will represent to you that Exhibit 11 is a screenshot of the GoFundMe campaign called Vic Kicks Back that was started on February 19th, 2019. You with me so far? Yes, sir. Have you ever seen uh, the GoFundMe page? No, sir. This is the first time you've ever seen it? I haven't followed it. An objection or responsive. Is this the first time you've ever seen a GoFundMe page? I don't recall if I've if I've looked at it before, but so so why is it that you don't feel a desire to make sure that money that's being collected in your name is spent properly? Objection form. Because I didn't start it. Okay, so I if Mr. Rotata is some kind of con artist. Uh, it's okay that he takes money from your fans because you didn't start it. Objection. Fair point. I have no knowledge of Mr. Ricada being a con artist. Objection, non responsive. If Mr. Ricada is a con artist and he is just taking money and doing whatever with it that is coming from your fans, not your problem. Objection form. I have nothing to do with it. Okay, so not your problem, right? Right. 
It's not his problem if I am a criminal mastermind. But we know who the real mastermind is, Lemoyne. Stop playing coy, you minx. It's you. It was your plan from the get-go. Uh, say, I gotta read some of these justice chats. Uh, Jesse James B 89 says, look at Vic's face. If one ounce of that beauty, masculinity, and confidence could be put back into the male gene pool, pool, Ron Soyez and Stan Shane Cuckbergs would cease to exist. Whoa. Um, Michelle, Michael rule says greetings from the Netherlands. Hey, hi, just got done watching the previous three live streams and my God, buy Thai beer to drink because even my mother who barely knows English, English said, He's rude and disrespectful and keep the raging, keep on raging at idiots from Twit and Erland. Will do. Uh, CNN Slayer says 10K people watching. If everyone in the chat is able to donate 10 bucks to the GoFundMe, we would make 300K right now. That's true. That's true. There's a challenge. The gauntlet has been thrown by the chat. Blackout Knight says, hey, Nick, I just lost a friend today. Oh, man. I figured I would try to brighten someone else's day by donating 25 bucks, pouring one out for my friend and enjoying the stream. Hey, uh, Blackout Night, buddy, thank you, but for your friend, man, may he rest in peace, or she. All right. Here we go. Here we go. Back to it. Correct. Right. Not your problem. Objection form. I have nothing to do with it. Okay, so not your problem, right? Correct. All right. Anybody else that you let use your face and your name to collect money from your fans that you don't? Not that I'm aware of. But I can assure you a lot of people are using, my, have used my face and my name for their own purposes over the years and I don't have anything to do with them. Jack is not Correct. responsive. There's no question on the table. Including uh, your dumb defendants. Photo, that is a photo of you? Yes, sir. Right. Do you know if that's a copyrighted photo? No, sir. How old were you when that photo was taken? Uh, uh, <laughs> Gotta be 30, right? Sorry? Gotta be about 30 when this was taken. Oh, you're very kind. <laughs> uh, that was taken in roughly 2008, 2009, I, th I, I think. So I would have been mid 40s. And just sit here today. Uh I, think, I think now is an important moment. I'm sorry. You want to know? You want to know what just happened? Uh, oh no. I'm sorry, Jay Sean. I'm sorry. I'm really sorry about that, actually. What just happened is... You gotta be about 30 in that picture. <laughs> oh, oh, the salt. If you think, if you think the very presence, presence of a man of Vic's age looking the way Vic does, doesn't make, doesn't make this guy angry. This stuff. I mean, that's reality. That's reality. I mean, imagine walking into a room looking like T. Greg Doucette or J. Sean Lemoyne or A. Park the Fatso and having to sit down with Vic, who's older than all of them, looks younger, looks better, but doesn't look... I mean, he looks younger, but he doesn't look childlike. He just looks good. It ruins them. It absolutely ruins them that Vic exudes charisma and Jay Sean's lungs exude liquid. That they picked, they, they batted wrong. They batted wrong on Vic's deposition. I would not have picked a guy that looks and sounds like Jay Sean Lemoyne to depose a handsome voice actor. Why in God's name would you do that? You gotta, you gotta out charm. You gotta out charm. All right, here we go. Other than I, th I, th I think so. I would have been mid forties. 
as you sit here today, other, other than your attorney, that I, I'm not allowed to get into those communications, has anybody else told you how money that is going into this GoFundMe campaign, how it's being spent? No, sir. You've never seen any documents that, that show how it's being distributed? No, sir. As you sit here today, are you paying uh, your attorneys to represent you? I have not, as of this moment, uh, paid them. Okay. Do you have an engagement agreement with them? Yes. All right. And does the engagement agreement have, where you pay an hourly rate, or is it a contingency fee agreement? I don't recall. But as we sit here today, since, since you've been involved with um, your current attorney, Mr. Beard, you've not paid him any money? No, sir. Counsel? Yep. Can I interrupt that off the record just a second? Let's go off, Let's go off the record. And we're going off the record. The time is 1043. All right, this is a good time to pause for just a second, do a couple super chats. Uh, Scully says his fans wouldn't have to, as in voluntarily donate to the GoFundMe if his stupid clients didn't try and destroy his reputation and career, correct? Matt Field says, hey, Lewiney, I am not a fan of Vic. I donated 100 plus to the GoFundMe because I believe he's innocent. Eat a dump truck of dicks after you polish off the Jarbo load of bolters. <laughs> Mr. Ruby Elf says, well, Fuhrer J convinced me to donate more to the GoFundMe and to your alcoholic streams. Lol, love your stuff, Nick. Hey, thanks, buddy. I appreciate that. Lunar. Lunar. Oh, dang it. Says, no, Vic, it's Rick Nikita. Come on, man. Come on, man. Hack, hack 0900, which is, that must be Jay, Jay Sean's lungs. That vape commercial got me, LMAO. You are hilarious, man. Oh, thanks, buddy. Thanks, I appreciate it. I hop in a one, says you nailed that Lemoyne impersonation. Please keep using it, LMFAO. Steve DeJohn says Google Lemoyne apparently contracted West Nile and had serious medical issues, including encephalitis and required months of mechanically assisted breathing and speech therapy. That must be why his voice is wussy. I don't know if his voice is wussy. His voice is, is uh, raspy, raspy. And uh, I almost feel bad making fun of it but i don't because he tried to use the courts to dox me which isn't actually the problem it's that he did it after they said they wouldn't that's the problem but that's okay that's okay we'll just fight fair fight fair i will mock and ridicule you into the dirt so that when you come in to do that deposition and you talk to me like this you'll be pissed off You'll be really pissed off. And I will smile at you. Steve DeJohn says, Google Lemoyne. Oh, wait. Uh, Talents here says, who's a better advertisement for smoking prevention? Sean Lemoyne or Yul Brynner? Andy M says, I don't know. If I was Cassie, Casey or whoever is representing Moronic, I'd be worried because victory seems so calm. Uh, Vic seems so calm and confident compared to Ron. They better hope Monica was better than Ron. I mean, I think she was more composed than Ron. Cowboy FMJ91 says, as someone who vapes, I think Jay Sean is smoking a different kind of pleasure stick. Uh, Elliot Schubert <laughs> says, the only thing blacker than the Fuhrer's soul is his lungs. He must be at a pack an hour. Nova Zero says, I have a suggestion. Kick Vic. Give up and give Vic what he wants. That way all that money stops coming in and goes to charity, you monstrous worms. Damn it, Vic says, Lemoyne's strategy is to ask questions back to back very fast to not give Vic time to think, but he just comes off as an ale considering Vic is calm and actually acting like a normal human being, a true underwater golem. All right, here we go. Uh, back to it. Back to it. Off the record, just a second. Let's go off. Let's go off the record. And we're going off the record. The time is 1043. And we're back on the record at 1043. Real quick, if at any time you want to take a break, this is not a, this is not the baton death march. Everybody oh my say you need to, you need God! Break. Oh my goodness! You're criticizing him for the Fuhrer and you're supporting Japanese, Japanese imperialism? Oh my goodness! The baton death march! Well, that's fine though. That's fine. Huh. 
And we're back on the record at 1043. Real quick, if at any time you want to take a break, this is not a this is not the baton death march. Every okay. time you say you need to you need a break, as long as you answer whatever questions on the table, yes, sir. we'll take a break. Yes, sir. All right. So I, I want to clarify something about uh, your engagement with your attorney. As we sit here today, you've not paid Mr. Beard any money. No, sir. Okay. You had an attorney prior to Mr. Beard? Yes, sir. Who was that? Uh, if you remember. Tanya. Tanya. My, my, yes, Tanya Meyer. She here, Myers. In, here in Dallas, yes, Fort Worth. Sir. Yes, sir. And how long did she represent you? Uh, a few weeks. And you paid her some money? Yes, sir. Are there any other attorneys that you have paid in association with the... No, sir. So, do you know of any people, any of your fans, who have donated to this GoFundMe campaign? No, sir. So when Mr. Ricada came to you and said, I'm going to set up the GoFundMe campaign, okay. did y'all have a discussion of what the money would be used for? He actually came to me and said, I've already set one up, and I wanted to tell you. Okay. And so it wasn't something that you approved ahead of time? Correct. I mean, but, but you're okay with it, right? You're okay with there being a GoFundMe campaign out there? As I mentioned earlier, I, I didn't have a really good feeling about it at first, and I expressed my concerns to Mr. Ricada. And his response was, you have a lot of people out there that feel like you're being mistreated and they want to help. And it would mean a lot to them to be able to help you. And so I did not object. What are they doing? Are they opening UPS packages? Like what is happening in the background? <laughs> Would you would you answer the question? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm so actually this is very insensitive. You just realized what happened. Sorry, Jay Sean is just breathing. Jadolf, Jadolf the Fuhrer is just breathing. Sorry. So I did not object. Furious paperwork. I'm dead. If anybody said that you approved Mr. Ricada of setting up the GOAT fund campaign, that would be incorrect. I did not object. But I'm not asking whether or not you objected. I understand that that's your position. I'm wondering if you approved him doing that. Well, I guess what I mean to say is if he didn't ask me if it was okay if he did it. He just went ahead and did it and let me know that he was doing it, okay. that he had done it. All right. I'm going to show you we're going to we're mark, pre-mark this Exhibit 17. Do you recall issuing a tweet on February 20th, 2019? Not offhand, but... I'm going to represent to you that Exhibit 17 is me pulling a screenshot of a tweet from you off of mm -hmm. uh, your Twitter account for February 20th, 2019. Do you recognize this? Yes, sir. Does this look like a tweet that you issued? Yes, sir. All right. Uh, I want to look on the left-hand side, second column down. It says, a friend expressed a desire to set up a GoFundMe for legal expenses. I approved his kind of offer and so grateful, but I am not managing it, nor will I personally receive any of it. First question, the friend that expressed that desire is Nick Ricada? Yes, sir. And you would agree with me that when he expressed that desire, you approved it? As I mentioned, he had already done it. Objection, non-responsive. 
does. He did not express a desire to do it. He expressed that he had already done it. Okay, so when you tweeted this out to your people, you didn't say, or on, to all of your followers, how many do you have? Uh, Twitter followers? Twitter followers. Uh, roughly 113,000. Okay, so uh, when, you read, when you made this tweet on February 20, 2019 to all these people, you didn't say, Mr. Ricada or my friend set this up without asking me, but I, but I was okay with it. Did no, sir, I did not. In fact, what you said was you gave it what it appears to be is you gave it your blessing, didn't you? Objection form. I approved his kind offer and am so grateful. That's that's Nick Man, uh, that's Vic Mignogna blessing the GoFundMe. Well, I I wanted to communicate that I was aware of it and and grateful and right? grateful. Yeah, certainly and grateful. Certainly, because y'all gonna take that money. Y'all gonna sue some women in the Objection dirt, aren't you, Mr. Man? Y'all gonna take that money, y'all gonna sue some women into the dirt, aren't you? Now notice the difference, right? When you read that on a blank transcript, it sounds calm. Like, y'all are gonna take that money. You're gonna sue women into the dirt. That's your plan, isn't it? But Lemoyne is actually mad here, isn't he? Why? Hey, Jay Sean. Are you getting paid? Or are you working for free like a dumb cuck? Are you working for free for a couple of broke defendants who just promise, promise, promise that they'll let you in so you can carry the tray of snacks and give her on a break? Jay Sean's not getting paid, is he? He's really mad. He's really mad that Ty has a pool of money to work with and he has a pool of promises from people he knows lie on a routine basis. Whoops! Whoops! You should have gotten an upfront retainer, Jay Sean, and it should have been much more than nothing. It probably should have been six figures. Whoops. Uh, Travis the Bard says, Lemoyne sounds like Darth Sidious with asthma. That's good. That's good. Uh, hold on. Texan83 says, out of curiosity, since the GoFundMe monies is put into the BHBH IOLTA account, wouldn't any questions about how the money being spent be under attorney-client privilege since it would be communication between Vic and Ty? Yep. Yep, it would. Perseus the Cat says, for Star Trek fans out there, Vic is channeling Kirk from uh, TOS. I, I don't know what TOS... I'm, I'm lost. The original series? In the episode Court Martial, cool, collected, and in command. Any minute I expect Spock to object to Lemoyne. Counselor, your questions are quite illogical. A scream of Cthulhu says, Monica, oh, Vic. Jamal stops. Who's Vic? Ron drops his snack tray. Vic, that bastard. Seymour Butts says, sounds like this wheezy lawyer needs to contact the law offices of James Sokolov inquiring about mesothelioma from working in soy shipyard industry. Caesar the King says, uh, wait, why is, why Lemoyne look, that's what Lemoyne looks like? I've been mostly listening and I assumed he was in his mid 80s. He sounds like a voice actor playing an elderly man. Zonar 17 says, man, they're transparent at AF. Vic's handsome, takes care of himself and has 212K plus in funds for support. Dude's wrecking them left, right, and center, and they freaking hate it. Uh, two more. Glue Sponge says, Dr. Claw needs to stop smoking filterless camels. I donated some more to the GoFundMe just because of that wrinkly dingleberry starting to started trying to be saucy. And then finally, Mirnum007 says, how many lemons did this guy suck to get a voice like that? All of them. Always the appropriate answer. Okay, here we go. Uh, yeah, sorry. And... And grateful. And right? grateful. Yeah, certainly. And grateful. Certainly. Because y'all are going to take that money. Y'all are going to sue some women in the Objection. dirt, aren't you, Mr. Mignogna? I'm sorry, say that again. Y'all are going to take that money and you're going to grind some women down into the dirt Objection. with this lawsuit. Form. That's what you're going to do. No, sir. That, that's not what happened? No, sir. I mean, where's the money's been spent? Objection for you. I don't know, as I mentioned you've, in you've her, your Mrs. earlier you've, question. You've sued Mrs. Real? Yes, sir. You've sued uh, Miss Markey? Yes, sir. 
I hadn't seen anybody else, right? Mr. Toy. Mr. Toy. Who's mad? Not yet, in answer that, to your question. Are there other people you else? plan on suing? Possibly. Are there other people uh -oh. out there that have damaged your reputation that I should know about? Possibly. I mean, they do more damage to your reputation than my clients? I don't think so. What was the money <laughs> going to be used for? Objection what was this me. money going to be used yeah. for? Well, I would encourage you to read it yourself. Objective. That was actually a great answer by Vic. Great answer. Because Vic could have said yes. He could have said, I don't know. He could have said possibly. He said, I don't think so. The four defendants that they picked, he decided with his legal team that these were the four defendants who have done objectively the most damage. I agree, by the way. I agree with that assessment. I think the four defendants in this case have done by far the most damage. Vic was at risk there. Not a big risk. But he could have said, well, other people have done more damage to me. And then they could have tried to make him look vindictive or something like that. It wouldn't have much bearing on the case, but it might make him look bad. Grind these women into dirt. Grind these women into dirt. Well, to be fair, I mean, grinding Ron Toye into dirt is grinding a woman into dirt. But just about everybody that Vic could sue is a woman. Right? Like, if we're being honest here, Funimation's a woman. Ron Toye's a woman. Who's he going to sue? Damon Mills? That, that's a woman. Uh, Chris Sabat? That's a woman. Sean Schemmel? That's a woman. Uh, is he going to sue Rooster Teeth? That's a bunch of women. I don't know. I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. Calm down. Calm down. Uh, no, it was really, I want to point out, that was a great answer. I don't think so. I think these are the four people or entities who have done the most damage to me. Of course they have. Of course they have. Because it goes to show, even if you argue that there's been ongoing reputational slag for 10 years, and their argument is contradictory, their argument is that Vic's a public figure. Okay. Every public figure has to deal with, every public figure has to deal with incidental slagging from someone else but then there's some act that becomes so egregious or has so much more impact than the other acts that it actually causes a public figure damage that the other stuff didn't so we're when in accepting their public figure argument they're defeating their argument that other people have been doing damage to vic this whole time because they were clearly ineffective like pokemon reference out of their mind Toye, Rial, Marky, and Funimation were super effective because once they opened their, their nasty cock holes, then that caused the damage. That objectively caused the damage. So there we go. Sorry, I just want to comment on him actually making a very, very good answer in what was definitely a trap question. And uh, that means that that question is definitely gay, according to the internet. I don't think so. What was the money going to be used for? Objection. What was this money going to be used yeah. for? It's mail! Well, I would encourage you to read it yourself. Object is non-responsive. I, I will read it. I person. will read it for you, sir. Oh, no. <laughs> Here. I'm sorry. I'm going to go back. Vic just bodied the lawyer. I'm going to read it for you, sir. And he didn't stop him. Lemoyne should be in control of this deposition. He should say, no, let me stop you and remind you of our roles here. I am the deposer. You are the deponent. I will ask the questions. You will answer them. I did not ask you to read that document, and you can shut your stupid mouth. That's what Lemoyne should have said. Instead, he said, yes, daddy, please read to me. I would encourage you to read it yourself. Object is non-responsive. I, I will read it. I will person. read it for you, sir. Oh no! Here. The fund is set up for Vic's legal defenses, and as you know as well, anything that was left over was told very clearly that it would be donated to charity. Okay. If this all ended tomorrow the lion's share of what of this money would go to charity, which um, I assume you would approve of. So, object is non-responsive. Um, my first question is, so the money, according to the GoFundMe page, is for your defenses, correct? That's my understanding. Are you being sued by anybody? Right now? 
No, sir. So what is the money defending against? That seems like a semantic to me. I think we both know what it's for. It's, it's Oh, yes, we do. It's for the lawsuit itself. That's right. It's for you to sue two women that have accused you of sexual Objection. harassment. No. Objection, three women and a company. Come on, Jay Sean. Rude. It's like a semantic to me. I think we both know what it's for. It's, it's Oh, yes, we do. It's for the lawsuit itself. That's right. It's for you to sue two women that have accused you of sexual Objection, harassment. Correct? No, sir. Objection form. Oh, it's not. The money is not for you to, for it not to be used to help you sue two women that have accused you of sexual harassment. The money is, is to be used for me to seek justice for defamation of my reputation. Are you aware of any other GoFundMe campaign in the entire United States where a man accused of sexual harassment gets money to go sue his accusers? No, sir. I mean, you're a unicorn, aren't you? So what sorry, do you mean? You say that again? I mean, you're literally the only male in the entire United States accused of sexual harassment who solicited money not Objection. to keep himself out of jail, but to go sue the harassers. Do you realize how unique you are? Objection. Am I? Hey, Jay Sean. Just for the record, Jay Sean just confirmed there's one unicorn out there. There's at least one unicorn. Uh, listen to listen to how mad he is. He's mad. Why are you mad? You're running the deposition, presumably. Or are you a beta? Are you a beta? Jay Sean, I have one question for you. Do you care about the negative effect of illegal immigration on the black community? Do you care about the negative effects of immigration, illegal immigration on the black community? Do you love black people? Jay Sean, do you love black people? Uh, listen to this. He should be running the deposition. Why is he mad? You've got two options. He's either faux mad, but he doesn't sound faux mad because he's not channeling that anger into useful criticism. Or you've got real mad. And it's hard to tell because his voice is so just hampered by his illness. But if he's really mad, then he is losing control of the deposition. I think right now he's in the presence of Vic, who is charismatic and trust me go into Vic's presence sometime especially when he's not at his table especially when Vic is not at his table he's got a natural magnetism to him he's a handsome guy he has a presence he uh most importantly when Vic looks at you and listens you you believe that he's listening whether he is or not Jay Sean believes that Vic is listening to every word he says the funny thing is, when Vic looks at him like this, Jay Sean is going, I'm here trying to destroy this man, and he's actually paying attention to me. Normally, deponents don't do that. Normally, they look away. Normally, they look down. Normally, they recoil. But he's looking into my eyes and listening. This is a natural skill. I don't know if Vic got it from birth or if he developed it over time. It is one of the objectively most valuable things that Vic does. And if you want to know why people love him, I'm telling you, I'm telling you as a man who has seen this in person, who has seen him disarm everybody who walks up to him by looking directly at them and at least giving the illusion that he is listening I think he really is, but if I'm being if I'm being as neutral as possible, he makes you believe he's listening to whatever you're saying and he's damn good at it. He's doing that to Lemoyne and Lemoyne is getting unsettled, maybe even aroused, maybe even a little bit tingly down in his dinglies, right? That's what's going on here. Lemoyne should be in control of this, but he's mad. Why is he actually mad? He controls the question. He controls the flow of conversation. He can wait. He could wait 30, 40, 60 seconds and make Vic just sit there and wait to ask a question. He doesn't. He doesn't. He doesn't know what's going on. He's faced with a charismatic animal in front of him and he can't deal with it. This isn't legal, right? This isn't legal work. This isn't legal assessment. This is 
perception. This is something that lawyers like Jay Sean don't understand. Lawyers like Casey don't understand. Lawyers like T. Greg probably don't understand. Low T. Greg. They don't get that Vic will slay a jury just by existing. Ron never will. And if Jay Sean looks to be mean with his gravelly back of the throat voice, that sounds like he's going to eat the souls of your children. If he is mean to Vic on the stand, and Vic, soft spoken Vic, big blue eyes, wonderful bangs, and nice highlights. Oh, and a healthy dose of guns. Looks at him, answers genuinely, tells him how he wants to be heard. He just wants to be felt. He just wants to reach as many fans as possible. Every woman and man on that jury believes Vic over Jay Sean every single time. There's no, it's natural. It's natural and you know it. It's natural and you know it. And that's the best part. Jay Sean is trying to grip the narrative here and he can't because they should have hired a supermodel woman attorney to depose Vic. They should have hired someone objectively better looking than Vic. They should have hired someone who Vic would be aiming to impress. Instead, instead they hired a, I don't even, what, a newt, a lemur, some sort of lizard creature to depose him, who sounds like he's speaking from his underwater tank because he can't be out in the sun too long. Not going to go over well. I've watched Beach Blanket Bingo and Vic wins. Vic wins and people want to see Vic win. They want to see the Chad win this every time. I like the Spike Man says, makes a joke about the Baton Death March and the Gape of Nanking. So your fans call you leader in German from a 10-year-old show. What? Trash Town TV says, use this for some Ricola lozenges. You're going to need it after impersonating Lemonhead as much as you have. Much love to you, Lady Rackets, and your 87 kids. God bless you, all, all of you. Good, sir. Thank you. Latin 32 James. Anyone else notice that Oren host uh, club cup that had Tamaki on it. Uh, oh, that's brutal if he did that. Oh, God, that's great. Great. Uh, I'll read three more. Alyssa Frott says, first super chat. Thank you. This is in honor of my sister who is an actual victim and thinks all of this is BS. Also, thanks to you and the others for standing up and seeking justice for the sweet man. Uh, last Vandalier says, I'll gladly take your money. Uh, I'll gladly take your money. Uh, keep up the excellent content. I'm glad to die of laughter watching your stream. Say thank you. Ray Fernandez says, am I missing something? Why are they focused on weird questions about his phone and the GoFundMe and not the actual allegations? Because they got nothing and they know it. They know it. They know it's got nothing. All right, back to it. It's accused of sexual harassment who solicited money not Objection. to keep himself yeah. out of jail, but to go sue the harassers. Do you realize how unique you are? Objection. Am I? Uh, do you realize? I'm sorry. I forgot something. The second part of that. The second part of that was the other person in the room is Ty. Ty has a different kind of natural charisma. Ty has, a, Ty has the air of someone who is in control of the room. He's got permanent dad mode on. Comes from Taekwondo for years, comes from being a successful attorney for years, and it comes from Ty's clientele. The difference here is people like Jay Sean and Casey are representing weirdos, whoever walks in the door. Ty is representing oil men, production house uh, owners, business owners, self made people. He's representing people who didn't take shit for their entire lives. And so Ty can't, he, by definition, can never take shit in an encounter like this. So Lemoyne cannot ever alpha Ty or else Ty can't do what he does. This is, I don't have formal training in sociology or psychology. I don't think I need it. 
to make these assessments. This is basic. Lemoyne is a beta bitch, and Ty and Vic are alpha chads in their own ways, and both of them are devastating to someone like Lemoyne. Who solicited money not Objection to keep himself out of jail, but to go sue the harassers. Do you realize how unique you are? Objection. Am I? Man. Uh, do you realize it? No, sir, I don't. Okay, I mean, you're very... I didn't ask for any of this, sir. Okay, let's take a break. He's answered the question. Do we go off the record? Yes. Yeah. Ever going off the record at 10 uh, GoFundMe would not actually allow you to run a criminal defense fund for sexual harassment or sexual assault. Just so we're clear, it's according to the terms of service that you should read, Jason. Jason, you're a lawyer. This is embarrassing. Read the terms. Oh, hey, that's it. Sorry. Sorry, I didn't realize that was the first video. Uh, I didn't realize that was the end of it. Let me get the next one. Queued up. Queued up. I mean, I assume we should still go for at least another video, right? 30 more minutes. 30 more minutes. Can we do that? You guys up for that? All right, so there's Vic. Let me read a couple more super chats as we go on. We got 30 more minutes of video. It's going to take another hour or so, and we'll probably wrap up the stream. Hmm. Come on, 12,000. We're at 11,999. We can't get to 12. We got to try 12. Come on. No. Hit that like button. Get people in here. Sven Zorensen says, Hey, Nick, Sabaton is touring the U.S. and Canada this fall. I encourage everyone who likes power metal to go to a show near them. They'll be in Dallas so you can take Ty as a historical war nerd. He'd sure, I'm sure he'd like them. Mama Bear says, Oh my God, me and my daughter made him that cup. He's drinking out of... Hey, awesome, Mama Bear. That's great. You want to know why Vic's fans like him? You want to know? There it is. There it is. That's great. He, that's fantastic. Andrew Bin says, Tropical Storm Lemoyne struck at 1 a.m. giving everyone in the Gulf Coast AIDS. The outside in says he's pissed off because he wants that money for reconstructive surgery on his vocal cords. Ouch. Parochial Joe. Bad choice. Bad choice. Parochial Joe says that mic noise was clearly Ty getting tangled up in his glasses again and flailing around off camera. <laughs> uh, Mr. Panda Sonic says Lemoyne is being paid in some alone time with Monica while Ron watches through the window from the tree. Ew. God, that's that sounds like a punishment, not a payment. Rando No Logic says, You're damn right this is the first time someone's legal defense has been funded for this, and it's about damn time. Another thing they don't realize. Another thing they don't realize. Seymour Butt says, his voice is that of the last week of tuberculosis or he was an unvaccinated child. Oh, God, mean. Dan Campbell says, lawyer, is this your tweet? Soye, oh, wait, no, sorry. Is this your tweet? Soye, I cannot recall. Machadna, let me read you my tweet. <laughs> Sarina Zakari says, I bet Vic is CPR and first aid certified. He's kind enough to help rude and condescending people because he can. Andy M says, Jay Sean, Fuhrer is in trouble. Vic is charismatic, Christian, and humble in front of a Texas jury. They know he can be on the stand. Ryan Smith says, just donated $100 to the GoFundMe. What a fool this guy is. God bless you, Vic. And Frostbeard2 says, best part of that vid was Beard having to call off Vic's staring contest with the Fuhrer. Fuhrer. Lol. Very good. Very good. All right, let's go. Let's go. And we're back on the record for the beginning of disc number two. The time is 11 a.m. Mr. Magnana, I'd like you to pull Exhibit 17 back out and talk about it a little bit more. Uh, left hand side of the page, top column, there's a discussion there about public and private apologies. What are the private apologies that you made? Um, shortly after Monica uh, publicly stated that I had done something that upset or offended her in some way, uh, I've been friends, at least I considered us friends for a very long time, and so I wrote Monica an email basically saying, I, I, I am mortified if I've done something somewhere in the past to upset or offend you 
but I, would you please tell me what it is? Because I, I didn't know in what she was referring to in her tweets. Is that the only person you privately apologize to? Yes, sir. Okay, and so if I understand this correctly, Ms. Rial uh, publicly made statements about you that reflected negatively upon you? Yes, sir. Did they describe why she felt negatively about you? Um, the first several for the first bit of time, I can't tell you exactly how much, how much time were rather vague. And uh, that was when I wrote her. As I said, we'd been friends, my understanding, for 20 years. The public apologies, what would those be? Uh, I, I put out a tweet at some point that just basically said, I am extremely sorry for any unintended, certainly unintended offense or uh, you know, anything that has hurt or offended anyone. Certainly never my intention. And I also uh, apologized publicly um, at an event. And who are you apologizing to? Specifically? Yeah. Anyone who I inadvertently offended. And, and what, what did you think you were apologizing for? Inadvertently offending them. And when you say inadvertently offending, you're talking about giving hugs or kisses and things like that, people that didn't want it. Whatever it was that, that people had a problem with. All right. Now, you, were you also referring to instances, the various instances in your hotel room where it was just you and a woman? Was that no, part sir. of it? That, so the public and private apologies didn't apply to that. I'm sorry, say that again, please. The, you know, as we sit here today, that a number of people have accused you of inappropriate behavior in your hotel room at these various conventions. Do you agree with that? No, sir. You don't think that that's been, you've been accused publicly of inappropriate conduct in your hotel room? You said a number of people. I'm not aware of a number of people accusing me of that. So you're quibbling with the word. I have something very, very fucking important. To tell you. Oh, never mind. Never mind. I'm sorry. I was a little premature on this. I'm a little premature on this. I will fight this. I will fight this tooth and nail. You tell me how this happens. You tell me. You chat. Tell me YouTube isn't broken from this. I got an email during this stream that this is how broken YouTube is. A copyright owner using content ID claimed some material in your video. Claimed by CMRRA, BMG Rights Management, Sony ATV Publishing, Cash, Imagem Music Publishing US, copyrighted content is YOUTH in all caps. Sony, Hey, Ty, if you're listening to me, if you're out there, Sony BMG, Sony BMG, whether they intentionally did it or not, issued a motherfucking copyright claim on this video. They are claiming ad revenue from this video. Sony. Sony, who supports the Hitler Youth and wants to gas the Jews, is claiming copyright on my video right now. Sony, owner, 95% shares of Funimation, has claimed this copyright video. And I will be filing a counter notice. I will be filing a counter notice. And Sony better release it. They better release it real fast because they owe me they don't own a minute of this content not a single second and i will absolutely rape them over lost fees 
and I will get attorney's fees under Lens versus Universal Media Group. And you can bet there will be twice as much profanity in my counterclaim because Sony can get fucked on this. They are breaking the internet for real people. And they can eat shit for all I fucking care. Sony, you listen. You better clean house at Funimation because those assholes are going to drag you into this lawsuit if they're not careful. And then you're going to have to go fire all of them or else you're going to get bent over by Ty. But I am filing a counterclaim right now. And Ty, I would urge you to suggest to John Volney or whoever that they release Sony or they inform Sony immediately to remove the content claim over something that they have no rights to. I'm going to dispute it right now. Right now. Uh, this is part of what is wrong with YouTube. There is clearly, clearly nothing to do with Sony. Uh, hold on. Hold on. I got, I'm little heated right now. Little heated right now. Ty's response, by the way, he just messaged me, says, let's just sue the fuckers. I'm fine with you mentioning this is my response. I am, mm, I'm so tired of this shit. I'm so tired of this shit. There's my. Hold on. I'm apparently not a robot. Let's see, copyright infringement notification. Who's affected? I am. See, I think I can, I think I can show this right now. Let's just pull this up right now. URL of allegedly infringing video. Well, let's get that. Please select one. Uh, let's see. What? What is this? No, 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 no. This is not correct. Apparently my URL is invalid. That's great. Ah, this is so stupid. They don't even know. Thank you, Sony. Thank you. Very helpful. Very helpful. Or thank you, YouTube. Hold on. I'm sorry. This, this stuff needs to stop. It needs to stop immediately. Live. Isn't it explicitly illegal to exploit copyright in such a manner? Yes, under Lens versus Universal Music Group. Oh my goodness, come on YouTube, where are you? Hmm, it still says my video is being monetized, so I can't actually dispute it. I will have to do it after the stream ends, I'm guessing. I'm guessing. If that, there's got to be an issue there. There's got to be something wrong with that. There's no way. There's no way. It's not even showing up. This has to be a mistake. Or maybe they already removed it. Maybe they already removed it. I'll tell you what. Since I can't find it now, we got to finish the stream. If, I, if this thing is on my video after it processes, I will record myself filing the dispute. Filing the dispute just for you guys. So I will update you on Twitter. I can't, I can't find it to file the dispute. It better have been a mistake. If it's not a mistake, I'm getting sick of this garbage. That content ID thing has no fair use assessment in it, and it's identifying 
material that isn't included in this thing. So we're gonna, mm, mm. I am done with this. All right, back to it. Sorry. Sorry for the relief. I got an email live that says a copyright claim has been put on your video. First, I thought it was Jay Sean, and I was going to absolutely wreck that little lizard. Uh, but it turns out it was an it was a content ID thing. Here we go. The number of people. Yes, sir. Ma'am. Of inappropriate conduct in your hotel room. You said a number of people. I'm not aware of a number of people accusing me of that. So you're quibbling with the word. The number of people. I got to go back. I got to go back. Sorry. You love inappropriate behavior in your hotel room at these various conventions. Do you agree with that? No, sir. You don't think that that's been, you've been accused publicly of inappropriate conduct in your hotel room? You said a number of people. I'm not aware of a number of people accusing me of that. So you're quibbling with the word, the number of people? Yes, sir, I am. Okay, how many? Good answer. I don't know. Well, do then you? how do you know it's not a number? Well, I let, didn't let, say let it me, wasn't a number. All right, let me strike that. Let me start this whenever. <laughs> how many people do you know of that have publicly accused you of inappropriate conduct in your hotel room? I don't know. More than one? Yes. More than five? I don't believe so, but I don't, I don't. Somewhere between one and five? Possibly. Okay. And you don't know who those people are that have accused you of this? I certainly know some of them. And all false, right? I'm sorry? And all false. Anything that happened was consensual. Um, exhibit 17, left-hand side of the page, second column, talks about if there's any surplus that will go to the Salvation Army Dallas Domestic Violence and Abuse Shelters. Whose idea was that? I don't recall, actually. But it wasn't yours? No, sir. You ever donated to the Salvation Army Dallas Domestic Violence and Abuse Shelters? No, sir. You ever donated to any domestic abuse shelters? No, sir. You ever donated to the Me Too movement? No, sir. Ever donated to any organization designed to stop sexual harassment? No, sir. Good. Don't. You ever been arrested? No, sir. And this is your first lawsuit ever? Yes, sir. Uh, in this lawsuit, Does there was... a divorce count? I guess not. Kind of. But, but I won't hold you to that. Thank you. Okay. Um, <laughs> did you do anything to look for documents to produce in this lawsuit? I'm sorry? Did you do anything to look for documents to produce in this lawsuit? You look can you, so can let me you let me clarify. In in most lawsuits, there's a process where documents are requested from each side. Your attorneys requested documents from my clients. We've requested them from you. You mm -hmm. with me so far? Yes, sir. All right. Have you done anything to pull doc any documents together for this lawsuit? I have provided everything to Mr. Beard that that was re relevant. That okay. So let me let me break that down a little bit. Um, when you say provided to him, in what form did you provide it? Did you give me your phone? Did you give me your computer? Uh, I forwarded, I guess, I forwarded e e emails. Or, that, or, I'm an object privileged to privilege. Okay. Um, Don't answer. Did anyone assist you in selecting information that you forwarded to your client? Not to my knowledge. Did anybody provide you documents to provide to your attorney? Not to, no, sir. Where did you look for information? File folders, computer, phone, where'd you look? Well, I, I, I didn't have a great deal because this has not been, it wasn't any kind of an issue. Uh, when it came up, the only information that I really had were any emails or, or uh, documentation online, mostly. Okay, so let me see if I can narrow this Stuff down that might have been sent to me anonymously. Do you, uh, did you have any type of computer expert look at your phone or laptop? No, sir. Did you give your attorneys or anybody else access to your phone or laptop? No, sir. Were you given uh, 
what are called requests for production. It's an actual list of requests for documents. And it specifies what we're looking for. I believe my attorney was. Did, was that provided to you? Do you know? I believe he told me about it. Okay. I don't want to, we can't get into that. Um, uh, how did you? Real quick, if I, no, no, I don't want to. Go, I don't. I don't like that. If you have a, if you have a question, we can. Works really just fine. I don't think you propounded request for production. I oh, think, is that yeah. right? Yeah, we just in the context of the deposition. Just paying a deuce, just taking us all we oh, got. Oh, my apologies. Accepted. Whoops! Whoops! Again, again, there's a problem. You actually didn't produce. A request for production. Did you? What have you been doing with your client's money for over 70 days? Hey, Monica and Ron, while you're going bankrupt, always remember to consult a malpractice attorney because they apparently didn't contest the TDMA letters within their 60-day window. They didn't produce a single request for production all they have is a subpoena deuces to come related to the initial notification the initial notification of uh of what you call it initial notification of deposition that's it they haven't been doing their job what are you paying casey eric andrea perez and jay sean for where are those document production requests where are they they just went ahead and skipped discovery, just failed to do it entirely, failed to contest one area where they may have been able to actually uh, severely, severely hamper the, the defamation claims. Just didn't bother reading the rules of civil procedure. Okay, persona non grata. Says cry havoc and let slip the dogs of war. Quartering says Sony here. We will release our claim if just one percent of your viewers back the brand new exclusively games crowdfunder. Uh, Figatree, hey, what's up, Quartering? By the way, Figatree says just for that here's twenty bucks. Suck a dick, Sony. Andre C says this is incredible. I've never had the pleasure of watching a dumpster fire in real time, but here I am, Ray John Nick. Brian Duick says isn't it explicitly illegal to exploit copyright in such a manner? It is. It is. It's just too expensive for most people to pursue. Vulcan de Den Denox says it's time for the Fire Nation to attack. Last Vandalier says, get woke, go broke, Sony. I like the Spike Man says, fuck it, take 50, slap Sony, slap animators, slap racist, anti white sluggles, and ruin that multinational company. IT Weeb says, the reality of this trial just hit me. We are literally going to have fat orangutan armed women in court claiming this attractive Chad, Mr. Rogers, sexually assaulted them. Philip Rep says, thanks for setting up the GoFundMe for Vic. Met him six years ago, and now he now and he responded to me multiple times in email, even helping me with guitar covers for a few of the songs. His songs. Sony trying to cuck you as I type this. Damn you, Lemoyne. And finally, Nichols in Minecraft says, guys, they just get his ad revenue, not Super Chats. You can calm down and chat. That is correct. That is correct. It's ad revenue. Uh, but Sony doesn't deserve any ad revenue from this. All right, let's get let's get back into it. Request for production. I oh, think, is that yeah. right? Yeah, we just in the context of the deposition. Just paying a deuce, just taking us all we got. Oh, my apologies. Accepted. Um, so any any documents that have been provided to your attorney were provided by you. Did you have any assistance pulling documents and providing them to the attorneys? Not to my knowledge. There were a number of folders produced for, to, by your attorneys. One of them is called Fan Club Discovery. It's like a little icon folder. Okay. Did you put that together? No, sir. Do you know how it would have gotten to your attorneys? No, sir. Do you know a woman named Lauren Kosich, K-O-C-I-C-H? Uh, yes. And who is that? Uh, she is uh, one of the moderators of the Risenbull Rangers Fan Club. And how old is she? If I had to guess, I don't know, but if I had to guess, probably mid-twenties. Any idea why she would be producing uh, documents 
for why we would be getting documents with her name on it? No. Because it's a Are fan club. with a screen name or email, mechwarrior underscore m at msn.com? No, sir. What about Chibi Dragonessa 007? <laughs> it's fun to say, isn't it? You know who that is? No, sir. Amanda Lynn Martin at yahoo.com? No, sir. Oh. What about Jenna Gentry? No, sir. You know who Martin Palmer is? No, sir. How about a Christian Eccles? E no, sir. H O L S? Do you have any uh, text messages with this with this Miss Real? No, sir. Not at all. No, sir. And certainly, if you don't have any text messages, then no one uh, could be reporting that you were showing text messages from Mrs. Real at conventions. I'm sorry. Say that again. Well, I'm. A, oh, let me see if I do it this way. I heard a rumor that you've been going to conventions and showing people text messages, supposedly from Monica Real. Is that true? Not to my knowledge. Okay. What kind of weirdo question is that? I heard a rumor. No one talks to you, you liar. I heard a rumor that you were going around to convention showing text messages from Monica Rial. One, why would Vic do that? Two, where'd you hear the rumor? Where'd you, I guess, uh, is, is Lemoyne a fact witness? Does Lemoyne need to be deposed? Who told you that rumor, Lemoyne? That's a weird one. That's a weird rumor. Um, okay, I gotta I gotta do some one thing real quick here. Uh guys, Earthworm Jim is in its final hour. And my boy Doug, who by the way has donated to Vic's GoFundMe and openly supports him, is nearing seven hundred thousand dollars. He's at 76 46 backers. You have one hour left. One hour left. To get in on uh, the first printing and and only printing of this edition of Earthworm Jim, as far as I'm aware, um, there may be a if there's a second printing. He's doing a second printing of Bigfoot Bill, but it's actually different from the original printing. So if you want to get in on it, go to Indiegogo, get your Earthworm Jim now. You have one hour to do it, and then the campaign closes. Just check it out. Push him over seven hundred thousand. It'd be crazy. That's all I got to say on it. All right, back to it. Sorry. That you've been going to conventions and showing people text messages, supposedly from Monica Real. Is that true? Not to my knowledge. Okay. Are you familiar with a website called Kiwi Farms? I've heard of it. And you know what it is? Not, I, I, I think it's some kind of an information gathering website. I've never been there. How did you, when did you first learn of it? Uh, just during this, during this uh, incident, over the course of this incident. And how did, and when you say incident, you're talking about the kind of the online eruption of allegations yes, against you. Yes, sir. And uh, who introduced you to Kiwi Farms, or how'd you learn about I it? I don't even remember. Do you know what goes on on Kiwi, at Kiwi Farms? No, sir. So, what is it you know about Kiwi Farms? As I mentioned earlier, it, it's some sort of a uh, information gathering website. That's about all I know. Uh, do you know what doxing is? D o x. -I I've heard that word. Yes. Um, what's what is that? What is well, that my understanding of it is that that it is the public uh, um, publication or uh, releasing of private uh, information about someone. I think that's. That's, that's my understanding of it. Do you know if Kiwi Farms has anything to do uh, with doxing any witnesses in this lawsuit? No, sir. That's certainly not something you would support, is it? No, sir. You, you don't want witnesses that are going to testify in this case, public information shared on the internet, do you? I don't think public information, or I don't think that kind of information should be shared publicly, no. Uh, are you aware of anyone trying to get Kiwi Farms to identify witnesses and disclose their information? No, sir. I'm going to show you what we're going to mark as Exhibit 10. I will represent to you that, key, that Exhibit 10 is a printout of a 
kiwi farms, um, and a particular thread that's in the bottom left hand corner. And what I want to do is take a look at page 10. Guys, I, I feel like I feel like I need to go get a pizza so Josh can feed me while we watch this. What is happening here? What is happening? Give me a second. I got to go to the bathroom. I'll be right back. Here's a little here's a little music to tide you over. drinks a fair bit but you realize that it just helps get his noggin jogging along with his glass by his side and his kids asleep tight we'll hear some lost planning tonight with his microphone muted we'll laugh at this boomer until he explains it's all part of the plan watch his face become redder White shows an end to the hills of Glen Livet. There's no one who explains the law better than Nick. So pour out a glass for the one to have passed to make the law what we have now. Oh, his lady is fair and she handles herself with the grace of one who has borne many children. As the wife of a lawman, she makes sure that he has the time and the place to provide for them there. So pour out an art bag about. Get on board. So pour out a glass for the team post on Twitter as we hear us planning tonight. From the white shores of Nam to the hills of Glen Limit, there's no one who explains the thought better than Nick. So pour out a glass for the ones who have passed to make the law what we have now. Oh, the guests are all plentiful from Doug T to Drexel. They bring their perspective and spice to the mix. But the reason we down let's go ahead and fade it out we'll play the rest of the song at the end play the rest of the song at the end i don't want to i don't want to play too much sorry i just really had to go to the bathroom but we are back we are back let's let's do this arms um and a particular thread that's in the bottom left hand corner and what i want to do is take a look at page 10 Guy sounds sorry, like a page two. less manly yeah. Super Dave Osborne. Okay. Page two, there's a number of names, including Mr. Toy, Mrs. Real. Uh, page 10? Apartment Miss Page two? Page two. Page two. Okay. Oh, they're, the, are they printed on, the on side. both sides? Yes. Oh, okay. And if you look in the bottom, at the bottom corner, you see that exhibit 10, page two. It's called a Bates label. The very bottom of the documents. Yeah, oh, the base down, down here? Yeah, that's how I'll, I'll direct you to. Pages. Okay. Okay. So, first time you've ever seen this webpage? Absolutely. You know anybody that, that has anything to do with Kiwi Farms? No. Uh, any idea why these particular individuals might be on this page? No. Do you know any individuals identified on page two? Are you talking about these pictures? Yes. Um, certainly I know Jamie. Uh, 
I know who Damon Mills is. I know who Amanda Wynn Lee is. I know who Monica Rial is. Ron Toy, Chris Sabat, Sean Schimmel, Adam Sheehan, Jamie McGonigal. They're all members of the of the industry. I have no idea why they might be on this page. It says Doxum at the top. Got to catch them all. You'd have to ask the people that produced this. I don't. I didn't do it. I hadn't, I've I've never seen this before. And you understand that there are uh, people who have accused you of inappropriate acts that have not disclosed their names. You're aware of that? Yes. Uh, and would you agree with me uh, that you, because they want to maintain their privacy, you would not want those names disclosed publicly? I believe that someone who makes accusations publicly, especially with the intention of, of destroying someone's reputation or job, at least should be identified. <laughs> I don't believe somebody should have the power to destroy someone and remain safely anonymous. Yes, good answer. Good answer. You're out there to destroy someone. Why do you get to remain anonymous and cry foul, Dominique Sky? Monica Rial, Jamie Markey, Chris Sabat, all of you people, all of you little whiny, whiny chumps. Uh, I mean, to some extent, Akiva Cohen, T. Greg, come on now. Come on now, you entered the public debate. You're trying to slag other people. What happens when that happens? Not a good look, fam. Not a good look. At least should be identified. <laughs> I don't believe somebody should have the power to destroy someone and remain safely anonymous. Okay, so if women come forward and accuse you of uh, and are willing to testify, you want that public, their identities publicly disclosed. Check your form. I would expect as much public disclosure of them as they have of me. What about women who have not publicly accused you of anything anonymously? Should they, their names be disclosed? Say that again, please. I'm sure. sorry. Uh, what if there are women out there who have never publicly accused you of doing anything inappropriate but are willing to testify in this case? Or should their identities be disclosed to the public? No, I don't believe so. Good answer. Mm. Look at the monster. Are you aware of anyone uh, involved in this lawsuit receiving death threats? No, sir. Have you they received aren't. any death threats? No, sir. And you certainly don't want anyone receiving death Absolutely threats? Absolutely not. Okay. You think you're a pretty good judge of character of people? <laughs> Apparently not. I thought I was. And when did... Uh, when did you start to doubt your ability to judge people's character? When people that I have known for many, many years who have treated me publicly, privately, to my face in dozens of settings as friends, and then spent the last five months trying to ruin my career and reputation. Okay. So besides the defendants in this case. The feels. That hits you right in the feels, right? Oh my goodness. Well, besides the people who just did what you said they did. Other than that, though. Other than that. Oh my goodness. Last five months trying to ruin my career and reputation. Okay. So besides the defendants in this case, is there anybody else that you would put in that bucket of trying to ruin your career? Oh, sure. Who? Hey. 
How about this? How about, I'll go through some names. Um, do you know who Michelle Specht is? Sure. Uh, your former fiance, correct? Yes, sir. Is she a truthful person? Yes, sir. To a degree. Um, any reason why she would make up things about you that you can think of? You'd have to ask her that. I, I, I'm not going to speak for her. I'm not asking you to speak for her. I'm asking you. Do I? You do asked you me if I thought she would do that, and I said oh, you'll have to ask her. Okay. What about Stan Dolan? Do you know who that is? Body. Yes, sir. Who's he? Uh, he ran a number of anime conventions. A truthful person. As far as I know. Got any axe to grind with you that you're aware of? Not as far as I know. All right. You know who Tammy Denbo is? No. You never heard of Tammy? Sorry, sorry, that Stan Dolan line. Man, I can't wait. Stan Dolan doesn't look like he's too happy with this situation, and I don't know that he's on their side. As far as I know. Got any axe to grind with you that you're aware of? Not as far as I know. All right, you know who Tammy Denbo is? No. You never heard of Tammy Denbo? No. D-E-N-B-O-W? No. Okay. What about Chuck Huber? Do you know who that is? Sure. Who's that? He is a fellow voice actor. Is he a friend of yours? I would consider him so. Uh, does he have some kind of talent agency company? I don't. Does he? I don't. I don't know if he does. Has he ever represented you in any capacity? No, sir. Represented me in what way? In any way. Not that I'm aware of. No, okay. not that I, nothing comes to mind. Have you ever discussed this lawsuit with Mr. Huber? Sure. He's a friend. I consider him a friend. Do you email and text about it? Uh, possibly. Definitely, you know, phone conversation. Mm, what did y'all talk about? When? What? I'm sorry. Uh, just about the, uh, the online storm and then when Jamie and Monica uh, started posting things publicly we spoke about that. And how long have you and Mr. Huber been friends? Uh, I, I, I don't maybe I don't know maybe 10 or 12 years I, I don't. Truthful guy? As, as far as I know. Right. About Chris Latosh S-L-A-T-O-S I don't really know him that well. He run he ran a convention here in Dallas that I attended. Was that Kamehacon? Yes, sir. Uh, did you email or text with Mr. Slitosh? Yes, sir. What about? What about? Yeah. Uh, he invited me to his event last fall. I was actually the first guest that he announced for his Kamehacon this year. And uh, and then when. Uh, when this eruption took place, shortly after it took place, uh, Mr. Slaytosh called me and told me that he had been getting pressure from Monica and Chris Sabat to dump me as a guest, and they made uh, threats and and uh, and put pressure on him. And so he told me that he had no choice but to cancel my appearance. And then I did not speak with him for quite some time. Uh, like two or three months at least. And did you end up going to Kamehacon? I did. Yeah. Uh, I spoke with him two or three months later after that hiatus, as I mentioned, and uh, and he told me that he didn't he didn't really see any reason he 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 didn't feel good about canceling me. That he felt that there were people that wanted me there, and that you know, barring any you know, anything substantial that he wanted to have me back. And so I was very excited about that. And he, he, my understanding, Sean, is that he called or communicated with. Do you see that? Do you see that? That was subtle. That was good. My understanding, Sean. Boom. Connected with his deposer. Come on, Vic. That's good. That's actually good. I'm saying come on, Vic, because it's like, it's ridiculous. This guy is trying to ruin you. And what he does is he gives that little thing. He personalizes it. Remember what I was saying earlier? 
He looks at you and you believe he's listening. And Jay Sean is having to go through the same thing every fan who walks up to Vic is going through right now. Vic could have shut off. He could have disengaged. Instead, Vic engaged his, his professional person. Vic engaged his ability to empathize. And it's probably because it's real as opposed to manufactured that he's able to do it. Now, Toye was asserting that what Vic does is fake, right? He was asserting that Vic doesn't actually care about people. He was asserting that Vic, because they don't understand how Vic does this. They don't understand that this is just part of who he is and the, the, the character and person that he's developed has become this thing because it's foreign to them. It's foreign when you look at people and you see a sweaty, nasty mask that you have to interact with rather than someone who just wants to see you. Those are two vastly different things. Vic does that here. He's able to keep talking. Why Jay Sean is letting him talk? He's lost in those eyes. He's lost in the eyes. He's getting, he's getting seduced a little bit. It's a risk. It's a big risk. Okay. The Richmond 42 says, YouTube is ridiculous. They even demonetize a charity video in tribute to Etika. Killed like the heel stream. If it's not a mistake, I hope... You sue them, no lube. Mither Nimmer says, JFC, Sony claiming ad revenue uh, as you stream as you discuss a lawsuit to which they are connected. If it was a plot point in a legal thrill thriller, I would say it was unbelievable. Truth is once again stranger than fiction. Nixx, Nixx says, uh, do people not realize that not everyone follows the Wee Boars as artistically as we do? Just because Vic is the plaintiff doesn't mean he has enough time to waste on Kiwi Farms, much less to understand why the site exists. And Seymour Butts says, Little is Hobo by Nightingale Cummings. Sounds like this lawyer. Stephen Frost says, Earthworm Jim is now closed. Went over 700,000. Alana Karen says, What a handsome man. Why can't creepy dudes actually look like this angel and not Ron Soye the limp wristed wonder? Because, because it would be more devastating to society if they did. Mither and Emerus says, By the way, the Texas legislature made changes to Chapter 27 this session. They go into effect, into effect in September. Westlaw has a page showing the alterations, deletions, and additions. Yeah, I know. I know. We'll see how that works out. All right, here we go. Here we go. And he, he, my understanding, Sean, is that he called or communicated with Monica and Chris Sabat that he was going to re-invite me. And, uh... And you got the camera. And, and, and then they expressed... Uh, more pressure and uh, toward him not to have me. He and he went back and forth, vacillated on it for a, I don't know a couple of weeks, and then we did have a contract as well. Um, and what do you mean a contract? A contract that I was to attend that event. And you ended up going to the event. Yes, sir, I did. Okay. Do you know a woman named Michelle McConnell Blankenship? Uh, not specifically by name. Okay. What about Lynn Hunt? No, sir. Whitney Robinson Fallbuck? No, sir. Greg Ayers? Sure. Greg's a voice actor. Been a voice actor for years with me. Truthful as far as you know? <laughs> no. I, 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 that's problematic. Okay. So, so, Whoa. so Greg has never really liked me much. Okay. So, so, and I and I've known that he's spoken negatively about me to fans and publicly for many years. And what's he said publicly that was negative about him? Oh, you know, uh, Greg is gay, and he d he thinks that I am somehow uh, against homosexuals or something like that. Uh, Greg I'm conservative. Is Greg is not. And uh, he's very vocal about, he was for many years, that he didn't like me much. Okay. What about Donald Schultz? Don Schultz. Don't know that name. Like Chris Sabat? Sure. Who's he? Chris is a voice actor, has been a voice actor as long as I've been voice acting. Truthful guy as far as you know? No, sir. Okay. So, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> so 
somebody press Sabat's life alert button. <laughs> oh, oh, single handedly just absolutely wrecked him. Uh, Chris Sabat, uh, truthful guy as far as you know? No. Oh, man, that was brutal. That's absolutely devastating. All right, here we go. Sorry. Here we go. Here we go. I got to go back to that. That's and uh, he's very vocal about he was for many years that he didn't like me much. Okay. What about Donald Schultz? Don Schultz. Don't know that name. Like Chris Sabat? Sure. Who's he? Chris is a voice actor, has been a voice actor as long as I've been voice acting. Truthful guy as far as you know? No, sir. Okay, so what, uh, do you and Mr. Sabat have some kind of issue? Oh no, see that's the unfortunate part. Uh, Mr. Sabat has looked me in the face as long as I've known him and been friend and acted like friends, pretended to be supportive, uh, told me that he was, you know, with me and, and for me, and then over the course of this uh, storm, it has come to my attention from different people that he has, uh, as long as they have known him, spoken disparagingly about me, made accusations behind my back, and uh, not been a friend at all. So, sounds like a lie. As I mentioned, apparently I don't have the greatest <laughs> luck when it comes to judging people's. And who, who told you that? Vic, it's okay. Because they lied to you. Because people like Sabat and Toye and Rial and Marky are liars. They're liars. And if people don't start understanding that they're liars, and the worst part is that people in the industry, I've talked to them, they know that these people are liars. All that, oh, Vic is so powerful, I can't, I can't go against Vic, he's so powerful. Sabat might actually qualify. The problem is Sabat has a stranglehold on Funimation. Hey, John Volney, if you're watching or if you see this, you might want to ask your clients Funimation how much they like cupping Sabat's balls at every business deal. How much they like gargling Sabat juice. At every business deal because they're beholden to Sabbath. Somehow this hundred and sixty three plus million dollar subsidiary of a multi billion dollar organization is held hostage by a balding sack of shit liar like Sabbath. What are you doing allowing that to happen for your client? And what is your client doing allowing that to go on? And they know it. That's the worst part. All of these people know him. They know what he does to other people. They know what he did to Shemmel. Shemmel, oh my God, how can you hang around Sabbath after what he did to you? How can you hang around Sabbath after what he does to you? They all know. That's the worst part. They're all, even Sony, and Sony, your little subsidiary is getting bodied by like a five foot five balding fat ugly whelp named Chris Sabat. You're getting thrown around on contract deals by that. By a guy who talks like this? What? Anybody can talk like Vegeta. It's not hard. Kakarot? I'm the only one who gets the honor of defeating Kakarot. Anybody can do this. Why? Why him? He's not special. Oh my goodness. Everybody knows this. At least according to my sources, everybody knows this. Sabbath's on blast in this depot. On him, spoken disparagingly about me, made accusations behind my back, and uh, not been a friend at all. So, as I mentioned, apparently I don't have the greatest <laughs> luck when it comes to judging people's and who, who told you that Mr. Sabat was speaking has been speaking negatively about you? Several people. And who are they? Uh, 
All of them. Chuck Huber, for one. Anybody else? If you, if you if it comes to you, that's fine. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm sorry, I, I can't. How about Faisal Ahmed? Faisal works with uh, conventions. How long have you known him? I know who he is because, you know, in your interactions going to a convention, you interact with somebody for a, a weekend who's running the show or who's in charge of the show in some way, but I don't really know him. He doesn't know me. Okay. Uh, Jim Gogol, you know that name? No, sir. All right. Adam Sheehan, do you know that name? Uh, yes, Adam used to work at Funimation. Uh, he truthful as far as you know? I don't know him well enough to be able to make that judgment. Okay. Emmett Plant. Do you know that person? <laughs> no, sir. Nisha <laughs> Perry. <laughs> Sorry, I just uh, over skipped. <laughs> Emmett, Emmett, you giant vagina. <laughs> no idea who that idiot is. Who's Emmett Plant? Emmett Plant is out on, on a Twitter. I've worked so hard for you to know my name. I work on all these productions. I'm super cool. No, no idea who Emmett Plant is. Oh! <laughs> oh, you deserve every second of it, you chump. <laughs> imagine, imagine spending the last, last like five months writing tweet after tweet and blog after blog, begging for a second of Vic's attention because, well, I'm, I'm a writer on Star Trek, or I was at one point. Imagine this guy just begging for Vic's attention the whole time, submitting a sworn affidavit, begging for attention, and Vic's like, no idea. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, sir. All right. Adam Sheehan, do you know that name? Uh, yes, Adam used to work at Funimation. Uh, truthful as far as you know? I don't know him well enough to be able to make that judgment. Okay. Emmett Plant. Do you know that person? <laughs> no, sir. Nasha Perry? No, sir. Dana Price, D-A-Y-N-A. Yes, Todd Habercorn. Sure. Who is he? Uh, Todd is a voice actor. Uh, I've known for a while, a long time. Consider him a friend? Yes. Consider him truthful? He has his moments. Any acts he has to grind with you that you're aware of? Uh, apart from, honestly, apart from just the the normal kind of rivalry, competitive rivalry, uh, I I will even tell you I you know I've I've made jokes and you know things at Mr. Habercorn's expense that I have apologized to him for. Um, we have a, a long history of friendship and conflict and friendship and conflict and friendship and conflict. Kaylin Sosedo? You no. Know that name? Well, I, 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 I've heard the name. I, I mean, I've heard the name because I, I know that she's been uh, part of this Twitter online situation. But she's not somebody you know? No, sir. I wouldn't rec I would know her if she walked up to me right now. Uh, Jenna Bruss? No. Tara Sand for Kaylin Saucedo, it's pretty simple. You just got to watch for the arm shaped like a swastika to walk through the door. Then you recognize Kaylin Saucedo. Twitter online situation. But she's not somebody you know. No, sir. I wouldn't rec I would know her if she walked up to me right now. Uh, Jenna Bruss? No. Tara Sands? No. Ooh. Jesse Pridemore? Oh, wait. Uh, Jenna Bruss is married to Jerry Jewell. Uh, Yes, I know who Jana is, but I have not 
interacted with her in years. Yeah. Uh, you know who Jesse Pridemore is? I've heard the name. But do you know, have you ever met her? I'm, I've met her. I'm sure I've met her. Right. She attended conven a lot of conventions, and I'm sure I've met her over the course of time. I've met an awful lot of people. Okay. How about Kara Edwards? You sure. know that is? She's a voice actress. Um, yeah. Um, she truthful as far as you know? Depends on what she says. Well, as you sit here today, have you known any instances where Mrs. Edwards has lied? My understanding is that she has recounted uh, interaction between us inaccurately that I would take issue with. Okay. Do you know what, um, how do you know that? Did somebody tell you that? I, I assume that because there was an article written that quoted an anonymous source and I, just from reading this, the account, I deduced that it was Kara. Yep. How about James Prager? No, sir. Sure let's, go off, the let's go off the record. <laughs> We're off the record 1129. All right, guys. I think that's it for the depositions tonight. It's 2.30 a.m. We will have more deposition of Vic Mignogna tomorrow. Tomorrow night. Um, right now, what I'm going to do, switch over. Hangouts here. Sorry, Hangouts is my label for it because it's usually how I do Google Hangouts. We're going to read through Super Chats and Justice Chats. We're going to do that. And uh, then, then... We're going to wrap up the show, and we will come back tomorrow with a lot more, a lot more deposition. Um, so there you go. There you go. I hope you guys are enjoying this. I know a lot of you are about to leave for the Super Chats, and that's fine. Stay tuned tonight, or tomorrow night, Saturday night, for another round of deposition with Vic Mignogna. Uh, don't know where else you can see this, but, um, come take a peek. And then next week, of course, we will do the Monica Rial deposition as well. Uh, but for those of you who are going to leave us before we hit these chats, before we're finished with the chats, have a good night and peace. Let's do this. Let's do this. Uh, Fatal System Error says, Vic's special power, charm, and disarm, which people would stop twisting their ability that ability for their perverse narrative. Stephen Avery says, GoFundMe hit 215,000. Let's push the GoFundMe. Kick Vic is losing their effing minds. Love how JS Lemoyne was grandstanding about his suing people. Is that proper? He is testifying. Or he's testifying. Uh, you can do a lot during a deposition. Robot Dunbo says, The opposing counsel has lost the plot. He's having rapport with Vic, conversing with him, and not even telling him just to answer the question. Unlike the beard yesterday, can we get an F in the chat for Soye's defense fund? Soye will never have a defense fund because no one would pay to defend that sad little whelp. Ew. Ew. Okay. Now let's hit Justice Chats. Uh, da, 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 da. Here we go. New York Games Federation. Gamers Federation says, Yo, Nick, been watching for a bit now. We're usually in bed by the time you stream. Uh, but was able to catch you able to catch you a little tonight here's a first of hopefully many donations keep fighting the good fight let us know if you're ever in cny central new york objection cd rom 1019 hey thanks buddy schwazoom says hypothesis on the tdma letter if they use the proper procedure the judge would have allowed it to be amended and resent so they let it go past and filed its insufficiency to attempt to get the entire lawsuit struck um well no they they filed its insufficiency very early on but they didn't do it through the proper motion. They tried to do it in a special exception. That was just a mistake, it looks like. Uh, Short Round says, if the trooper runs the light and has his hat on, it's legal if his hat uh, was off and is out of uniform, then you can arrest him. Troopers are just tax collectors. They don't have police powers. Thanks for coming to my Nick Talk. AkivaCohen.com is for sale. 
according to short round. So if you're looking to pick up AkivaCohen.com, it is for sale according to short round. So go check it out and buy it. Uh, that'd be very useful for you. Let's see. These hand says war chest is the best boob job. eh? sounds like someone knows what a Pizuri is now. Have fun with lady rackets. Oh no. Knight of Opex says this, this guy's voice sounds like a lawnmower. Can we get this man treatment for his throat cancer or tuberculosis or a new larynx? Start larynx. Start to go fund me for this guy so I don't have to hear it anymore. Gosh, freaking kill me now. Should be classified as torture. Jesse James. Wait, I read that one. Mythos Irving. Says, stop gassing the Jews, Vic. A monster, no a devil. Darius Vestav says, I'm an hour late. What the hell did I walk into? Why is a whispering grandpa pestering Vic? Man, Vic is a saint. Still better than that dumpster fire that is Toye and Casey, though. By the way, tomorrow's my birthday. Maybe sing me a song, Daddy Rackets. Uh, not tonight. Not tonight. And Smoker's voice say, I love Israel. And how dare you use the Fuhrer name? Also help my lungs are dying water help. Uh, citizen of Yar Yarnam says, I'm scared the guy questioning Vic didn't properly adjust his portable oxygen tank and it will explode. Uh, Shen Shanghai Ku says, uh, Shanghai Ku, sorry, says, frankly, I find Fuhrer Lemoyne's impression of late Super Dave Osborne to be in poor taste and disrespectful. I agree. Sudaquin says, gonna have to watch the rest of this tomorrow. Thanks for all the streams, Nick. Love the content you produce. Hey, thanks. Love that you watch it. Michael Rule says, my God, is this Lemoyne? Just started watching five minutes ago. It is. It is. Seymour Butt says, press S to spit on Monica. Rude. But maybe worth it. Xander Zran says, are you going to sound like him with all your drinking and smoking in 20 years? Uh, wink, wink. Where did you find out about when did you find out about his voice and been not telling the rest of us? Well, that's that's privileged. Uh, Citizen of Yarnum says, I don't think it's a coincidence that Lemoyne shares an extremely similar name with a region in Red Dead Redemption 2, as I'm pretty sure he was born in 19, 1899. Fuhrer Jadolf Lemoyne's gavel, gar, gravel gargling voice may ultimately be the result of West Nile, but I'm guessing uh, the glass of cigarettes he drinks every morning isn't helping either. <laughs> Turbo Freak says, uh, oh, wait, no, Neil Purcell says, is, is Vic being deposed by Super Dave Osborne? A post-mortem Super Dave? Turbo Freak says, that old crusty man voice sounds a little bit ticked off as some of Vic's answers. Seems like Vic's getting under his skin. Yeah, doesn't it? Doesn't it? Uh, ben Cheever says, say the stupid deposition somehow actually goes ahead. Can you please tell them you've got a cold that day and answer every question in your perfect Lemoyne impression? They couldn't do anything about that, could they? It would be priceless. I don't know how they could. As long as I maintained it the entire time. Makoto Nijima fan. Hello, Nick. Could you please respond to the email I sent you about the copyright issue? I understand that you're busy, just worried that the email got buried. Also, could Toye get charged with perjury after lying during the deposition? Um, I mean, in theory, sure. In theory, sure. Willie, probably not. Cormoran says, lol, der Fuhrer just insinuated that Ron Toye is a woman. Schwazoom says, Nick, this is 2019. Just because Ron, Ron Chris Sabat, Sean Schemmel, Funimation, Rooster Teeth are gigantic vaginas doesn't mean they're women. That's true. They're front holes. Knight of Hopex says, how can you be a big enough of an a-hole to deserve West Nile virus? This guy is the unicorn, not Vic. <laughs> Whoo, chick Perkata. Says, could you invite Dick on sometime to discuss civics and politics? They don't teach you in school. Things like the Congressional Apportionment Amendment, 30,000 people per representative, the Electoral College and the Federal Reserve. He knows a lot. Maybe. Love talking to Dick. I talk to Dick all the time. Cormoran says, sorry, sir. I will not sign the sexualized doodle you made of me and you together. Uh, Winter says, Fallib is retarded. Mercenary X says, Vic is Adam Jensen from Deus Ex and Adam's voice I didn't ask for this. I don't know what his voice is, but I'm going with, I didn't ask for this. The Keck Romancer says, first time justice chat. I heard about you from Dick and started watching regularly after the AA streams. Uh, keep the great content coming and get back on drunken peasants sometime soon. We'll see. Bad Dragonite says, he sounds like he got a tracheotomy and smokes it out of his mouth. He sounds so old that the snacks he gave out were pebbles after gargling them first. He sounds like Winnie the Pooh after smoking 10 packs of Marlboros washed down with mustard gas. No, that'd be like, ooh, ooh. I can't even do it. I can't get high pitched while doing that. Oh, man. 
Uh, Blackout Knight says, great stream tonight. Thank you for all the support. It means a lot. Just finished my drink and got to work in the morning. Good Nick. Good night, Nick, and everyone tuning in. Hey, good night, buddy. Luca Z says, had a great, had a conversation about Vic with a couple anime fan co-workers. One called him the Keanu Reeves of anime. Well, I'll tell you about my deposition if you go ahead and tell me about that ass. No, sorry, that was rude. Uh, Keanu Reeves of anime, and we all agreed Monica is a garbage human. Hated Seven Days to Die says, since you didn't see this a few days ago, I've sent it just when you were signing off. Now more important than ever, do you have a backup channel up in case they're trying some shady stuff with your channel? Not on YouTube. I really should. I really should. I'll, I'll work on that. Bad Dragonite says, uh, he sounds like what Nosferatu looks like. He sounds like he deep-throated Freddy Krueger. He must brush his teeth with sandpaper. He took drinking fire water too literally. What cancer ward mortuary did they hire this mummy-sounding mf -er from? Uh, Iryoku Hikari says a contribution for this momentous occasion where Nick and the Beard go to war, destroy them. Billy Foo 1488 says, tell Sony to get F for me. Sony better bite your pillow. Riketa is going to go in raw. Dumb Fs. Bad Dragonite says... Uh, Bad Dragonite says, this is what, uh, it sounds like when you have a case of Sandy vagina mouth. Wes Nile caused this? What did he do? Go dislocate his jaw and catch a whole swarm of mosquitoes in his mouth and swallow them live? Walk down a ga gravel driveway for the same responses. <laughs> Alex P10. Alex P10 says, $10 from 215k on GoFundMe and Earthworm Jim is less than 6k from 700k with one hour to go. Can it be done? Yes, both of them. Jesse Joestar says, F phony Sony, get an Xbox. These hands says, no, Jesse Joestar, do not get an Xbox. Get a Nintendo Switch to play fun and enjoyable games like the soon-to-be-released Fire Emblem Three Houses. Available July 26th at retailers everywhere. Rated Peggy 12. Nick owns two. Nintendo, give him money. Yeah, do. My kids own them. Rick Conningan says, I show up to Vic saying, I don't think that people that try to destroy someone's life shouldn't be anonymous. Yes, Vic, yes. Vic is giving amazing answers. Also, that lawyer's ver voice hurts me. I do not like it. Random question. Uh, why made you use real names online? I don't know. I've always stood by what I say. Don't know what else to say about it. Uh, sometimes people don't like it. I don't really care. What is it with sleazy scum lawyers, all lawyers are scum, and needing breathing assistance? Who's keeping all these pricks on life support? Seriously, is there a necromancy hospital out there resurrecting a-hole lawyers or something? What the hell is going on? Ask Ginsburg, buddy. Ask Ginsburg. Uh, Vix Paw Schwazum says, Vix pause when asked about Todd makes me think that the rumors that Todd threw him under the bus are true. If so, think he deserves what he gets. I don't think those rumors are true at all. Um, I think... I think Vic and Todd have a complicated history. I think Vic and Todd have a very complicated history. And if Vic is smart, which I think Vic is very smart, he's cautious to endorse or deny the opinions of anybody else. There's nothing wrong with that. And truthfully, how do you know if someone's an honest person or not? Uh, fast forward says, Nick, is it possible the monetization claim involves not this video, but rather your Ace Attorney videos? Nope, it's this one. The game is apparently owned by Capcom, but perhaps Sony has some commercial connection to it. Not trying to justify their claim, this just wondering. No, it's it's specifically this claim. Um, I will definitely uh follow up with it. Uh the quartering let me know that you might have to wait, might have to wait until the uh the live stream ends to deal with it. So there you go. Books Games Pottery says, Nick, stop lying. You will never you will forget about making a backup YouTube account as soon as the stream is over. Likely. Also, please answer my email, LMAO. Gosh, I, I do need to answer that. You asked the hardest question of anybody, Books. The hardest question of anybody. Um, okay, let me get to Super Chats now. Justice Chats are, are uh, tame for the moment. All right. Oh, come on. YouTube, YouTube cucked me on super chats. So just a minute, I gotta, gotta get to him. Gotta get to him. Man, does everything start running slow when you do this? Okay, almost there. Almost there. Come on.
We're almost, we're almost to the spot. We're almost to the spot. Uh, July 12th, 2019. Uh, amazing. Sorry, I don't need to read you guys the date. Today. Today is the date. Amazing says, Ethan Ralph, it's me, Gator. Andrew War Snowboard says, remember to go to Sate before they close on 729. They're closing on 729? Grr! Uh, I will I will be able to, actually. Uh, Ty Salter says, Greetings from the hospital. Drink one for me. Oh, buddy, I, I drank a couple, but I'll drink a little bit more. Just a tiny bit. Just for you. Just a little sip. Little sip. Little sip. Uh, here we go. Here's a sip. Mm. Oh my goodness. Um, Bamboo Shoot says, We must protect our precious cinnamon roll, Vic. Kyle Jordan Gaming says, Rackets, the God Emperor demands your presence. Kyle Jordan Gaming says, In the grim dark of the far future, Nick still isn't here. Jamal Breezy says, I always knew that Ron Toye had a small winky. Neil Purcell says, late and forgetful Ron. Umpty Madu says, I'm Nick Riccata and my nipples look like milk duds. Ooh. Kyle Rambler says, late and lemoin. G. Mar Marouge says, Mars Girl was in the watching and chat last night. She may be back tonight. Might have been a parody. Don't know. Chrissy Tokyo and Kevin C. Thanks for the donations. Wingser012 says, Nick is never late. He only arrives precisely when he needs to. Uh, Colonel J says, hey, Nick. Past few shows were great, but I'm wondering, wondering, do you have a particular stance on doxing? Both sides seem to be doing it. Is it good? Is it bad? Perhaps there's more nuance. Thanks. It's not illegal. It's not illegal absent some sort of threat or illegal activity to acquire the dox. Uh, my stance on it is I'm not a big fan of doing it, but what am I going to do? Police the Internet? It's going to happen. If you're inserting yourself into controversies. You always got to keep it in the back of your mind. I know I do. I know I do. Voice of Truth and Chrissy Tokyo. Thanks for donations. San Pan says 10K plus tonight, or 10K tonight. Oh, we got over 11. We might have made it to 12. Did we make it to 12? My thing says 1182 was peak, but I saw 11999 specifically. Uh, all right. Cutie Honey 30, thank you for the donation. Greg Boogan. Awesome content, Nick. Any chance of doing a shill stream for Richard C. Myers Legal Fund to defeat Mark Wade like you did, Vic? I've done them. I've done them in the past, I believe. Think. Think I've done them. I know I've mentioned it several times. But uh, yeah, I'm going to talk about Myers' book, talk about his legal fund and his case. There were actually case updates in that today. Um, we'll get to those early next week. Missy says, if you want to see a very special Ron tweet, search YouTube. Ron Toye claims victory. Says, deposition was a slam dunk. Go to 7 minutes, 10 seconds. No, Ron. A boomer. Boomer says, as a cop in my former life, I worked a case where two guys threw a Molotov cocktail at student housing. Do you respect my profession or do you disparage it? Either way, I'll defend you with my life. Cheers with club soda. Boomer, I respect your, I respect your profession enough to know not to trust you. How's that? How's that? No, uh, in reality, many cops, the majority of cops overwhelming are great people. I'm friends with several cops. Uh, I think they're very good, very good guys. Um, I don't trust any cops because I so expect you to do your job correctly uh, that I don't want to ever put myself in a position where you would do it very well. Uh, Voice of Truth says, wait, so let me get this straight. So the two chicks who went to Vic's hotel room somehow later became roommates to Ron and Monica. Whoa, 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 whoa. let's, well, Voice of Truth, let's not talk about that. Let's not talk about that. Kyle Jordan Gaming says, uh, wah, chest. Harry Thompson says, this looks like me giving $5 to you, and it actually is. Thank you. Car Kara says, awesome speech, man. Hey, thank you. Name Withheld says, I don't know if this is my question. Is there a case for defamation without an actual court case to prove innocence? Uh, yes. Yes, all the time. All the time. Um, Rakuna. Rakuna, Rakuna Matata says, Can't wait to see just the sheer difference in decorum between decent human Vic and slimy pedo weasel Ron. Noir777 says, Bought my copy after 
yesterday's show with the making of book a patch and i grabbed a poster as well and it was a hundred bucks including shipping and tax dna crow says how much wood would woodchuck chuck if woodchuck did cuck soy there you go um zarenbog 2720 says just bought my super fan copy of earthworm jim worth it where the ear juice says right oh got your ron toye song started we'll take the weekend though because i'm using the video mix for the song i'll post it in your discord sounds good buddy ryan murray says cheers nick drinking some centauri toki tonight rando no logic thank you san pan says press v for vic's deposition uh you guys overwhelmingly pressed v good job brave and wolf 1324 thank you for the donations yellow flash 2 says vegeta what does the scouter say what over 9,000. Chris John says, Ron Soye starring in total, I don't recall. Brave and Wolf, thank you again. Misfit, 1075, thank you for the donation. Uh, we've got Henry Loader, measly New Zealanders. Measly New Zealand dollars still buy whiskey, I think. Thank you for the content. Please never stop doing the voice stuff. And thanks for helping, Vic. Hey, it's my pleasure. My pleasure. I'm just glad it doesn't annoy people too much. Chris Jablonski says, in best Casey Eric voice. Direction form. Takaki Onsai says, Dang, Vic has a chin that's so sharp it cuts the vast dried meats that Ron Toye is serving on the snack tray. Makes Manjoy look Manja look positively female. Let's not be too hasty. Adam Rasmussen says, Been showing my friend the case. He said, How old is Vic? 30, 35. I was like, uh, Add 20 to that. He did a literal WTF, then went to go work out. <laughs> Kai Whitwell says, I'd always liked 40K, but never really read any, never read any books. You inspired me to start reading, and I decided to begin with Horus Heresy series. So far, it's awesome. Good choice. Good choice. Lord Rap of Rap Mountain says, if Vic were Irish, his name would be McNonya. McNonya. Uh, Ranstein Hernandez says, at the very start of the video, Vic looked pissed. Uh, I would be. No one wants to do a deposition. Crowned. Brown Damon says, does Vic still refuse to sign gay stuff? Because after seeing how handsome he looks in his deposition, I have a burning need for him to sign my chest. Bubblegum Babe Face says, I got the chance to meet Marky. Vic looks nice. Oh, that's brutal. That is brutal. Cyn uh, Cynical Dread says, this dude needs some water. Lulzy King says, Nick, they agreed that no one would release this. And didn't Soye and Rial release it? Kind of did, didn't they? With selective redactions. But not enough selective redactions to be specific. Just enough to make their case. Just enough to not make their case. To make their public case. Bubblegum Babeface says, I don't know him or the people involved. I'm going to keep an open mind. Maybe he didn't do it. Maybe he did. You could tell a lot when someone's on the hot seat. I'm curious how that worked out for you. Lurkmore101 says, So this is where the smoking man went after the X-Files. Ruby King 1997 says, dang, Vic could steal my girl and I'd be okay with it. He's so handsome, no homo. Addy White says, how old is that guy? Lemoyne? Lemoyne? I think he's maybe 40. Busy robot hand. Oh, read that one. Josh Calhoun says, someone get that man a throat lozenge. Bubblegum Babeface says, I'm an animator. I'm animating an opening to this. Dracula Garfunkel says, uh, this guy sounds like a homeless Beetlejuice Jesus. Uh, Gwen one says soy for the soy god ron for his cuck throne <laughs> ari says his voice is making this bearable vic voice is making this bear bearable okay that makes more sense forever 229 says i think vic meant to say i don't know ryan k says lemoine sat down in his massage chair for too long and it scrambled both his voice and his brains oh no your jew powers just took my money again wicked jew powers man every time sun pa sun pan says objection to voice don't do drugs kids Basement Troll Production says it's over 10,000. Jaeger Mitchell says haven't followed this, but I trust Officer Lasagna. Vulcan to Dinoc says this is what Chad Thundercock looks like, kids. Underscore says say in Vic's voice, stay back, aim, aim, aim. We will defend ourselves. No one important says Christian past police officer a Chad and did PSAs. Good luck trying to go against this character. Cody Byer says, can someone please spare Lemoyne some moisture? Selwyn says, uh, first dono, they're totally going the Vic is an ex-cop route. He was, is flexing his authority on others in the future. Just wow, pathetic. White Crow says, God, please tell me we can find Vic's PSA videos. 
If the if anyone can, the internet can. Cesario JPN says, can Vic not make things sound kinky? That voice. Uh, Sage o Sage Ali says, can Ty object to this guy's voice? I wish he he probably wishes he could object to his own. Blink your eyes. Fourteen hundred says, in Full Metal Alchemist, Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood, Fuhrer is in reference to the character of Fuhrer King Bradley, the leader, a mistress. Uh, Pirate Skeleton says, Fuhrer Bradley from FMA, uh, SMH um alan woke says is that in what way is any of this relevant it's not but in deposition it doesn't really have to be unicorn meat man says beard accusing people with no evidence is wrong this lawyer are you hitler <laughs> uh ambi pass studio production p says fuhrer means leader in german well, let's not break it down. Fear only means gas the Jews in German. Vulcan to Dynex says the Chad Renaissance man versus the Virgin Geezer. Punish Creeps Works says I can't believe Vic doesn't have 100% knowledge on all his fans and mods from the fan site. Chris Jablonski says adjust tracking when Lemoyne speaks. Real, Real Spider Phantom says Nick the Annihilator of Chats, NTAOC. Of, yeah, NTAOC. Bad Dragonite says, Nick hits 10K, suddenly dead air. Whoa, Kimosabe. Uh, the doctor says he is reaching so far up his behind, his hand is coming out of his throat and mouth. That's the problem with his uh, vocal cords. Guns Down Inhale says, tell smokers stop making fun of my Chinese cartoons. Uh, Rash, Ratch Cat 123 says he's breathing in between every five words. Like a heavy smoker, it sounds disgusting. This is better. Uh, Mecha Random Forty Two says this is better than every Marvel movie I've ever seen. That's a that's a compliment. Uh, lots of emojis. Mad Lad says technically speaking, Patrick Stewart, Christian, uh, Christian Bale. I can't even do that one right now. Even Billy Bob Thornton are celebrities who are in uh, Hayao Miyazaki dubs among among others. Mr. DJ Fly Eye Two or Mr. DJ Fly Eye says bet you money that Shane and Law Twitter Brigade are already on Twitter making victory laps that Vic has lost the case. We'll see. Twilight Dragon Three says I didn't know Wendy Old Bag was joining the stream. What do you got with that whippersnapper? No one important says Oh God, Fuhrer is the highest rank you can be in FMA military. Which Edwin Edward Elric I can I can never divorce myself from Edwin. Which Edward Elric, Vic's character, is in Stop Digging Limwe. 93 TJ says, Frogman's name sounds like Doodle Bob's catchphrase. Hoistein says, What is a power test? Just a struggle of power between two people. Austin Shearer, thank you for the donation. Vulcan to Dinax says, Meme of the year, is this a power test? Nerd Tagular says, Is this dude seriously trying to argue perception is not reality? Austin Shearer says, This man's voice sounds like it's being auto tuned. Forever 229 says, did Mars Man get a letter? Uh, Harbinger 345 says, the GFN butthurt, but they don't care. Not at all. Fly, thanks for the donations. Mega Man 382 says, they hate how professional Vic is right now. Absolutely. Mark or Mac and Liberty says, Nick, for the love of God, do not use the phrase licking hemorrhoids ever again. <laughs> Thought you might like that one. Nicholas says, click the dang like button. RJ Hatfield says, my sick child asks, is that man is dying? <laughs> Mets 2128 says, in our case, hashtag Matthew 2641 and how we go about this. Uh, Goofus Maximus says, has Jamie Markey been deposed? Not yet. Is there a date for that? Not yet. Discovery has stayed in the action right now because of Funimation's uh, T uh, TCPA filing. Andre C says, Jesus, your Fuhrer voice is priceless. Thank you. Fireface8911 says, courtesy of YouTube Premium. Thank you. Jello Shotgun, thank you for the donation. Halo Millennium says, it's so nice to have lack of objection to form. Almost kind of miss it for the laughs at least. RJS, Jello Shotgun, RJS, and Shogun, Shogus00, thanks for the donations. CC Ria says, the two undisputed facts in this case, no one can pronounce Vic's name and no one can spell Nick's name. Uh, Mofo's the King, thanks for the donation. Harbinger345 says, uh, R E H C A I E Y T A H. That's Nick's last, last name, Durr. I don't exist at all. Says, has anyone thought that Monica may be the one making tweets with Ron's account? Well, I mean, I don't know if it's Monica, but he is watching it happen either way. Many of the responses sound like they came from a woman. Cody Byer says, let's be real. I am spastic. I make no apologies. 
Pony Cordero says, can we call Lemoyne the Iron Lung? Bandigoth, thanks for the donation. Andrew War, War Snowboard says, did Jay Sean get non-Hodgkin's lymphoma from Roundup? Nope, he got West Nile from nature. Uh, Andres Diaz says, a bit off topic, but I gotta wonder how and when this will all end, Nick. Oh, we're in for a while, man. I hope Vic wins this thing and funny and moron lose. Me too. Me too. Martin Campbell. Been trying to send a message. Test. Test successful. Wither survives. Thank you for the donation. Elio Vladen. Says, vape brought to you by Deep Throat 69. Plantation Sensation says, Nick, I watched you scratch your nose with your microphone. You ain't slick. Uh, Vandegoth says, vaping my life away over here. Thanks for the roast. You're welcome. Uh, Logan Darklighter says, lawyer seems focused on Nick and GoFundMe. Why? Because they got no facts. They know it. If they had facts, they would produce them. Ron promised to produce them, and Ron produced nothing. Miss Beery, thanks for the donation. DKRE says, here, take my freebie, kind sir. Thanks for all you do. My pleasure. Chris Hobby says, woo, lad. Lemoy is a trash can. Love you, rackets. Love you back, buddy. No one important says, put more money in the GoFundMe. Suck it, graveler. Ark Lich Steve says, we got Darth Vader without his helmet interrogating Vic. Blaine 20 says, Lemoyne voices. We are the culmination of our past and the bane, the bane of our future. Penina Chan says, killing it, Nick, should have been a voice actor. Blaine 20 says, Lemoyne voice, no one cared who I was until I put on the mask. Uh, Mario Valenzuela 2 says, objection. Prosecutor needs a respirator. George Lopez says, what defines a public figure and why is that something they are trying to prove that Vic is? First super chat, try some Jim Beam Apple. A uh, public figure is a long legal question. It's a question of law. And what determines it, what defines it, is if their general purpose is if they're either a public official, a government employee, uh, acting within the capacity of their government employment, or, or in general, a general purpose public figure that is not a government official is someone whose fame and, uh, and, and namesake are so pervasively known that uh, that they're open to ridicule because because their fruits are the fruits of their life come from their public status. Um, think Tom Cruise. Think someone the paparazzi is constantly chasing. Why they're trying to prove what uh, limited purpose public figure is a little different, and that involves typically thrusting yourself into a public controversy or public discussion. They're trying to prove it because it makes defamation harder and that they have to prove something called actual or legal malice which is either knowledge of that the statements are making are false or reckless disregard for the truth of the statements are making it's a long long discussion cast the cat says lemwag calling you a con artist seems kind of defamatory well it technically just asked if i was just asked if i was a con artist uh how effed up are you when your clients are on the defense for defamation you defame on record um, comfy couch says Vic is such a chat. It's ridiculous. Rash cats, uh, one, two, three says Jay is trying to make it sound like Vic is making people type their passwords to confirm purchases of the GoFundMe. Beta Ray Tasty says, is Lifeline Lemoyne going to be okay? I don't know. I hope so. Sinigan Chief says, I got an extra bottle of great Indiana gin PO box, PO box 97 Spicer, Minnesota, five, six, two, eight, eight. It's in the description. Eduardo Ramirez says this lawyer sounds like vapes. Uh, like he vapes crack every day. Ortha Blade says, thanks so much for all the laughs. You gave me so much hope with the Vic situation. Keep doing what you do. My pleasure. Figget Tree says, why doesn't Vic say that money goes into an IOLTA account? Nick has no access to it. Uh, because Vic has no idea how it functions. That's fine. He's not really involved in it. Is it typical to limit your answers in a deposition? Yes. I don't know much about depots. I just hope Vic does well. In deposition, if Vic admits to knowledge of how the GoFundMe functions mechanically, they would ask him further questions about the GoFundMe that he might not know. And then they might say, but you said you, you said you knew how it worked. Well, why don't you know this and try and trap him that way? He doesn't know how it works. Didn't set it up. Didn't read the terms of service. I did. They're going to try and use that to justify a deposition. They got a lot to overcome. Uh, I just hope Vic does well. Me too. Bandagot says, uh, Amazon basic breathing tube. Uh, Andre C says this, that's the sound of the Fuhrer pulling out his ventilator to get much needed oxygen. He needs to live. He needs it to live, man. Art glitch. Steve says he opening hard candies. WTF is Jadolf doing no idea. 
77 Phoenix Fire 77 says, as a Filipino, I'm putting my race card, pulling my race card just this once by branding Lemoyne as an insensitive racist. My grandpa was in the Baton Death March, damn it. Wow. That's God, I bet he's I bet he had good stories. Had or has good stories. Hope he's still alive. If not, peace be upon him. Henry Henry Gwen says, Oh hey, it looks like Vic can remember this tweets, lol. Or remember his tweets, lol. Yep. Yep. Elio Vladen says, can we change Lemoyne Lemoy, Lemoy name to Deep Throat 69? Feel good always 990 says, Vic is the hungry bull to Ron's fruit tray. Caesar the King says, Lemoyne is the only one mentioning grinding here. Christopher Mar... Uh, I may have said it. I may have said it. I think, I think they think Vic tells me what to say. Nah. I'm not going to give him credit for these lines. Are you kidding me? Christopher Marlowe says, thank you for your service, Nick. My pleasure. I donated the GoFundMe because of you, so you deserve my shekels. First super chat ever. All oh, humbled. Thank you so much. Thank you. Chinku Donor says, stop dead naming Ronica. He's transitioning beautifully. Silverock216 says, Nick, first super chat. Thank you. Thank you. Best part of that voice is it looks like a bad voiceover. Love your work. Thank you. Sevik says, if you were proclaimed Fuhrer King Nikki, what reforms would you make to decrease the cost of and speed up the resolution of this sort of litigation? Summary execution for the defendants. Nascenda says, the best defense is a good offense. Go fund me, use stands. Blink Your Eyes 1400 says, it's not that they miscounted the amount of women. He just chose to ignore Ron's existence. Jester of Fire says, is objection as non-responsive lawyers speak for? I don't like the way you answer because it makes me look bad, so let's try again. I mean, long story short, yeah. Christopher Marlowe says, this is one of the slimiest lawyers I've ever listened to. Even Saul Goodman would be disgusted by his lack of tact. Bet it gets better. Busy Robot Ann says, Vic Mignogna is the best unicorn. Holy crap, that's amazing, LMAO. Harrison Morris says, between the unicorn comment and the age guessing, seems like Mr. Beta Lawyer has a secret crush he's trying to repress. Rick Nikita says, is Vic the one, one of the lost Primarchs? Yes. Yes, number two, I think, right? William Amyot says, the squeaky lawyer seems so unprofessional. Raw Shark says, toddler wakes up fussy. I put on the stream, soothing sound of Ricada puts him back to sleep. Thanks, Nick. You the real MVP. Well, it's my pleasure, Raw Shark. Thank you for tuning in to Ricada Law, Law Explaining the Interwebs. Hope you and your toddler have a great night. Chrono Trigger Happy says, Lemoyne, I got this. Later on, oh, he's hot. Sevik says it's officially on the record that Monica at least is harassing Vic by her accusation. Is that what Lemoyne said or did I hear wrong? No, you didn't hear wrong. Didn't hear wrong. Dan Honeycutt says love Vic's crafty product placement. Uh, ST Cont Cup. Paco says gave another 50 to the GoFundMe because of Lemoyne. Uh, Achuris77 says Lemoyne's voice is rough from all the soy drinking. Nicholas says Ich leibe Vic Mignana und Ich leibe Nick Riketa. It's very German. And I know I said something great. Literature Devil says, hashtag Team Chad for the win. Frog uh, from Eggman says, Vic is Vic Boss. Squally says, Vic voiced a unicorn already in Pokemon Caldeo. Ty Beard says, that's my boy. And yes, it's me. Oh, hey, there you go, Ty. Hey, welcome to the show. Sith Lord Darth Beer says, Vic back row is just full of counter trap cards. Evan Lacey says, this lawyer is role-playing as Mortarian. <laughs> I am the Plague Lord. Arklich Steve says, Lord uh, Mosdemundi, gargling broke glass over here. Devil May Cry 5 says, Vic won the stare down at the end of the video, LMAO. Timothy Reaper says, they were probably afraid that if they hired a beautiful female lawyer, she would ask him out on a date. Tom says legal eagle might give Vic a run for his money. Uh, I believe that not at all. But that's my personal opinion. Cast the cat says I donated to Vic's GoFundMe twice out of spite for Lemois. Thank you. Uh, Achuris77 says donate again to Vic's for GoFundMe. DLJ Screwjob says is it good jury noticing 200,000 supporting Vic? Maybe not. Maybe not. Um, Jared says, so can we still send super chats? Yes. No one important says, come at us, Sony. Anthony Sears says, I bet they claim Vic's face. Squally says, Nick, I have a feeling it's because of that fan made cup Vic is using. Uh, Scar, uh, Sacrificial Goat says, more to sue for. 
Horrific of Frostgale says, we didn't start the fire. It was always burning since the world was turning. Obscure Anime Guy says, Nick, I'm sorry, but you're hilarious when you're mad. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Don't apologize for that. I'm fine with it. Shining Nebula says, I lied. This is my last chat for a while. Back to Earthworm Jim. And Nick, please bend Sony over backwards. This is ridiculous backing Vic afterwards. Austin Heartless says, live, sp live stream you disputing the copyright claim. Nichols in Minecraft says, guys, they just get his ad revenue, not his super chats. Uh, Rawl Urbana, uh, Urbana says, after clocking in 114 hours, I'm going to enjoy your stream. I'm glad. Thank you. Arklich Steve says, Nick Ty treats Sony like Bane did Batman. We're coming for you, Dark Knight. We're coming. Hope you know the reckoning is at hand. Sony. Animation. Coming after you. Dracula Garfunkel says, Sony Funny's pathetic effort to silence you. Uh, it's probably just their stupid content ID system, but who knows? I know how I'm going to phrase it. Carol Koo says, hard to believe Vic used to be a copy. So nice. Nichols in Minecraft. He, to be fair, it sounds like he was a beach cop. Nichols in Minecraft says, shouldn't get anything, but don't stop super chats. David says, I'm late and gay, but wow, what a stark contrast between Vic's depot and Ron's. Vic immediately comes off as much more likable, genuine, and believable. Criminal Imagination says, this is for Sony and everything they've done, including what they did to Michael Jackson. In Rambo's words, F them. Click, click. Click, click. Arturis, uh, Arturis 77 says, are we sure this guy didn't get his law degree from a Cracker Jack box? Because it would explain a great deal. Wyatt Whitman says, oh, can't wait to see Sony get reamed like soy boy. Kenneth Robertson says, get them, Nick. Silverhawk216 says, hey, Nick, you said they claimed the word youth in all caps. Was it maybe the chat on your screen? That would be gay. They didn't claim the word youth. The title of the work that they claimed is youth in all caps. I'm not familiar with what that work even is. Arcade Outpost says, uh, why do these deposition lawyers always sound weird? This one sounds like Bobcat Goldwith. <laughs> And Alex Jones has sounded like in a middle school. Uh, and Alex Jones has sounded like a middle school hall monitor. Mm, ben, you, what do you know about the GoFundMe? What do you know about it? Can you tell me about the GoFundMe? <laughs> Is that a good Bobcat? I haven't, I haven't, I saw Bobcat live uh, several years ago. God, that guy's funny. Warlock Hunter says, "Thank you for a great stream. As always, Nick, it's always surprising and entertaining." Thanks for keeping us informed with Vic and everything else you do. Hey, it's my pleasure. JXDBX says, wait, they don't have to redact the email names? Not really. Not really. Uh, Wyatt Whitman says, why does it sound like he is questioning him while sitting on a dryer that's vibrating? I'm, am I crazy or does anyone else hear it? Constant vibrato. Cesaro JPN says, Chair Coon is a better streamer than Nick Riccata. Um... Bad Dragonite says, that rant was my justice chat, Cherry. Enjoy. Hey, thanks, buddy. Comrade Commissar Yuri says, uh, Sony are being ridiculous. Keep up the good work. And I agree with Larry. I must have the look of the devil in my eye. Uh, Snarkicon DM says, Nick, your jukebox only has one song, you boomer. It, it does. It's, I like it. Jeff Meyer says, Earthworm Jim, over 700,000. Over 700,000. Uh, Alex Thoreau says, you need to make a BRB peeing sign. I do. I do actually need to do that. I think I could do that. Chucky Wookie says, 8 a.m. here in the UK. This is great fun to listen to whilst doing my chores. EVS was right. Your streams rock. Hey, thanks, EVS. And thank you, Chucky Wookie. Blaine 20 says, oh, and for the record, we held a gun to your balls and made you start the GoFundMe for Vic's defense of his good name, Nick. Blaine 20 says, I am 55 minutes behind because all help keeps breaking loose at work. A unit owner just got arrested for DV. Had some squatters in a unit earlier. Oi! Oi! Uh, Dave to save 26 says, Hey, and Nick, is this Casey? No, this is Lemoin. Lemoyne. Dude sounds as though he's about to cry. Blaine 20 says, When Lemony Snickers falsely accused Vic of wanting to use the money to sue some women into the dirt, could Vic have objected? I would have. Uh, Ty could have, but why? Let him, let him say something stupid. If you object, then they might strike it. X Dalek says, this lawyer have a team of doctors next to him? Yeah. Remember the end of Goodfellas? Or was it Casino? Is the end of Casino? Joe Pesci's voicing over is like, they brought in all the bosses. They brought in all the bosses to court. 
Listen, when the bosses get brought in, look, sick or no fucking sick, people are getting clipped. That's what I picture all the bosses with their like respirators and in wheelchairs and they got nurses everywhere. Uh, I think Lemoyne's got that going. BJ Spartan says, did Nick just confirm his purple is Chris Sabbath? Al Valentin, oh my God, can someone crowdfund Lemoyne a CPAP? Sounds like he's dying. Um, Pyro Blitz says, hey, Nick, loving late night streams. Hey, thanks. Welcome to him. This guy sounds worse than my uncle who was diagnosed with thyroid cancer. Cato Roan says, donating the GoFundMe instead of a larger super chat. Hey, thank you. Thank you. Cast the Cat says, what happened to redacting non-party's names? Lemoyne. Uh, Eric Reeder says, Nick, you are, are you aware Jennifer Lynn Hunt, aka Thoughts Fixing Broken Stairs on Twitter, committed tortious interference. She convinced the leadership of Liberty City Con to cancel Vic from appearing. Oh, did she? Did she? That's interesting. Ty, hope you're listening. That's an affiant in Vic's case committing ongoing, ongoing tortious interference. Dr. Con DM says, Savitz, and I hear that Jennifer Lynn Hunt, a.k.a. L.J. Montello, or J. Montello, or J.L. Montello, whatever the stupid name is, also purveyor of copyright infringement. Uh, I hear that she's a data analyst and maybe gainfully employed and might have resources. Might have resources to uh, actually pay out a judgment. Narcticon DM says, Savitz line just got a thousand people smaller. The doctor says that Nick is a man of God, a merciful man of God. Nick's Hex says, Ron and Lemoyne have formed the most soy-filled love triangle of our time. Uh, Noir777 says, I've been listening while playing games. I had to alt-tab go full screen, full screen and had to rewind when Vic said Sabbath isn't truthful. 93TJ says, what did Sabbath do to Shemmel? Not my place. Not my place. Boag says, who gave Sabbath so much power? Dub figs. Harbinger 345 says, and so the soy ship of Emmett sinks sadly, oh well. And nothing of value was lost. Ryokion says, first super chat, and I just had to since I now know my favorite VA. Chuck is actually a bro to Vic. Nick's Hex says, over slash under on Vic to Soye's I don't know ratio. Uh, Soye's is infinitely higher so far. So far. Super Anime Gamer 01 says, first ever super chat to you, Nick. Love these streams. Vic rocked this demo. I mean, depo. Earlier you said Sabbath did something to Sean. Can you share what it was? Not my story. Sorry. Voidrick says he sounds like the guy from Robocop who was drenched in toxic waste. It's also how I picture him. Is Halesen says this has been on my mind all day with Ron saying this looks like my tweet so much. Doesn't that suggest necessitate that there are tweets of Ron's that resemble what was being shown? Sure. Sure. Liz Reptile says I feel really bad for Vic. Know what it's like to have friends try and ruin your life for social gain. In the end, I won, but the pain never leaves you. It doesn't. Dave, Dave to save 26 says, my question was to who was deposing Vic. Lemoyne. J. Sean Lemoyne is uh, deposing Vic. Shane Gossman says, finally, I can sleep. I have a graduation party tomorrow and a tough mutter to run. Keep it up, Nick, and good night. Richmeister84 says, who's the person you said isn't happy with Monica? Well, I mean, a lot of people aren't happy with mom. Mad Butterfly says, just got off work and started watching. About to start from the beginning, but it seems like very interesting things have happened tonight. Big Red Bear says, watching this deposition compared to the Soy Man from yesterday is jarring. Vic's deposition is prepared and at the very least is attempting to be honest. Matthew Spur says, what did Chris Sabat do to Sean Schemmel? Do tell. Not my story. My story. Boomer says, I fully expect myself and my rookies to be perfect. I can sleep well at night, and I know my rookies can too. Would you be up to making a current law enforcement stream? Uh, dude, I would love, I would love a current cop to come on stream and talk about stuff. I would love that perspective. Absolutely. Saber Shock says, I found your channel because of the Vic lawsuit. Stayed because you're hilarious and 40K. What's your favorite army? What about your least favorite army? Well, I don't, I don't really play that much. My favorite faction in general is Custodes. Uh, and uh, I, I like Custodes, man. Least favorite? Tau. Sorry, I don't like them. Commies. I, Asia Fraser says, anyone else willing to see Vic Decron? Pay to see Vic Decron. Uh, that'd be great. The Sith Lord, Darth Beerus says, Monica and Ron need to be sentenced to the deepest and darkest pit in the galaxy. Uh, off to Tartarus with them. Wolf Freak says, it's my birthday, and I get this epic fun. Thanks. Hey, happy, bir happy birthday, Wolf Freak. 
Uh, Tamaki Sakurai says, I feel sad for Vic when he realized that his friends were snakes. Yeah. Fixiation says, there's nothing more Christian than licking the stoma. Nick Riceda Esquire. On a side note, I think Ron is copying your beard. It looks suspiciously like yours. Also, he's 5'6", alpha manlet. Oh, man. Uh, please don't do that to my beard. Tildeo the horse says, I don't understand Mo Ron's plan of attack. Don't worry, neither do they. Neither do they. Keldeo the horse, thanks for the donation. Eduardo Ramirez says, play some YOLO rhymes next time. Don't think it's copyright. Nothing I played was copywritten. Not at all. Uh, copyrighted. Sorry. I Asia Fraser says, also behind joining, short staffed as always. Hey, that's fine. Welcome to it. Welcome to it, I Asia Fraser. Mike Lombardo says, this depot is so sad, man. It is. It's hard. It's hard to see someone uh, whose friends have destroyed them. Um, here we go. Mm-mm. Citizen of Yarman says, imagine Lemoyne's pillow talk and Lemmy's voice. Yeah, baby. I'm going to ride you like that chuck wagon I took to the Gettysburg address. Double A said, Vic's depot. Truthful, open, earnest, engaged, and heartfelt. Ron's depot. Dishonest, avoidant, rude, and cold. Perfectly fitting exemplification of the stark contrast between the two sides in this Vic situation. Andre Scarlett said the Kiwis called Jay Sean Lemon Party, among other things, but I never thought he might actually sound like someone who participated in that. Oh, God. Hated Seven Days to Die says your YouTube station's ability to live stream at risk right now with Sony's claim. No, they did a content ID claim, not a copyright, not a full copyright strike. So live streaming is still good. They're just trying to claim all the ad revenue from this video for no reason that makes sense. Hated Seven Days to Die says another nickel for the Miss Old Bag cameo. Thank you. Xander Zrand says, I was talking to someone who said he'd only watch news, and I said I watch a lawyer on YouTube, and he said he likes Legal Eagle. What should I say to him? Uh, Tell him to start a Minecraft server and get in it. Joshua Bailey says, hey, Nick, do you know if you happen to receive the email I sent you? I don't know off the top of my head. I don't don't recall. Uh, Kevin9793 says, was that depot supposed to work in their favor, or Vix? Look to me like Vic is coming out on top so far. Vic is doing very, very well. Very, very well. All right, I'm going to start the outro here, and uh, we will. There you go. We will uh, We'll wrap this up. We've got a couple chats left. A couple chats left, and then we're done. But I want to, I want to, I want to signal the end of the stream. Join back tomorrow. we got more Vic Deposition coming. Omar coming. Uh, outside in says, hey, Nick, to quote my sister, you're a good bean. Thanks a lot for shining some light in the dark world. Keep on leading the charge. Hey, thanks. My pleasure. Uh, Mal Malfunction, thanks for the donation. Pretzel Man 718. In your time of law explaining, have you ever been threatened with deposition before this case? I don't know. I don't think I don't think Maddox threatened me with it. He might have. I don't remember. I don't think so though. 93 TJ said, really blue balled us with Sean and Chris story. Someday maybe. Someday, maybe. All right, guys. Thank you all. Shoot. Shoot. Kraken of the sea. Thanks, buddy. Thank you all for joining me. Join me tomorrow. Later tonight. Whatever you want to call it. For the rest. Well, I think the rest of Vic's Depot. We'll see how it goes. Goober Grab Gabbers has just woke up. Time to watch Vic's Depot and find out how he was behind the 80 years war. Also decided to get Phoenix right to have a go at it myself. It's pretty fun. Sorry for squeezing in. Thank you. Silva says, Lemoyne is the terror from the Tick Amazon series. All right, guys. Have a good night. I'll see you tomorrow. I'll see you tomorrow. Peace. Peace. That perspective and spice to the mix. But the reason we're here and the one that we cheer is the one who is showcasing us since career.
get unemployed. Support out a glass for the tea. Post on Twitter as we hear lost painting tonight. From the white shores of Nan to the hills of Glen Limit, there's no one who explains the thought better than Nick. So pour out a glass for the ones who have passed to make the love what we have now.